Ah. Oh. Yes, this is uh, the Hatchet, Adrenaline, okay. and Penguin stream. There is no bright. Oh, go fuck yourself. They can hear yep. me, bitch. <laughs> there is no bright. This is our <laughs> channel now. I don't know why. You do not uh, recognize the bright in the yep. content. It, 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 uh, from from yeah. now on, this channel will be nothing but Roblox Let's Plays. Oh, go fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they. it's always been. What the fuck are you on? What? Oh, oh. yeah, true. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, okay, everybody, we have to start casting for a Roblox movie that's like really schlocky and mildly racist. What the fuck? No, oh, my. <laughs> no, oh, my. like microaggressions God. level racist. Not no, like... no, 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 no. Look, I know a lot of Roblox YouTubers are racist, but no, no. anyway, no, I I would no, like... but we can at least appeal to the other side by doing a bunch of dumbass microaggressions. We know it's not oh, that, shut the fuck but up, Joe we Biden. can appeal to them. Shut the fuck up, Joe Biden. Uh, excuse me, it's Dark Brandon. <laughs> oh my god. I don't anyway. understand the Brandon shit, I'm gonna be real. Anyway. Basically, well, sorry, just real quick break. Um, basically, there, there was this guy, uh, who, who's a Democrat. Who at mm -hmm. one point showed up at a ball game and his name was Brandon and he was like publicly supporting Biden. Mm -hmm. And then a whole bunch of conservatives just started saying, let's go, Brandon, in reference to Biden being dumb. But then Biden started to do some more based shit. So the Internet came up with the idea of dark Brandon. Dark Brandon is when Biden does something that's mildly good. Is it mildly good or, like, mildly he's not trying to take away people's basic human rights? It's a sad thing that those two aren't mutually exclusive. <laughs> anyway. Or are, or are mutual. I don't know what I'm trying to say. It's a sad thing that that's the bar we have to say, but set, but yes. I All would right. say Dark Brandon is Biden when he is actively trying to help people. Other than billionaires. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right. Okay. Because he's always also, trying to help billionaires. Yeah. Also, Bright. Fin final, final pit stop, because this is something I wanted to bring up on stream. What the fuck did you send me while I was on the pot? What? I'm, I'm taking a goddamn shit, right? And then <laughs> I just get this random message from Bright asking, uh... Are slugs divorced snails? What the fuck does that mean? What the fuck are you smoking? I was watching a, a video about r slash hold up, and that's one of the memes that popped up. Okay, but what I'm the fuck a does that even... My proof that penguins evolved uh, from uh, humans evolved. That from humans penguins. evolved from penguins. Yeah. But 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 bright bright. What does that even mean? Are you saying that the snail shell? Is is there is there a partner? <laughs> I don't because know. watch because if watch because because prove be the worst stuff imaginable. But you see, oh, if that's go ahead. if 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 that's the case, then this is basically like saying are apes just divorced monkeys in reference to their tails? <laughs> that's These not that's not proof. Penguin, that's not proof. Is that at the very <laughs> least not... vaguely scientific evidence? <laughs> no. Let's see. It's not like Trump it's not even said. evidence. <laughs> <laughs> did you just Photoshop this just now? Where the fuck did you get this image? <laughs> Anyways. Right, I insist before the stream gets started, Major, we need to put this image up on stream. No, fuck you. I made it myself. I made it myself. Do it. Do it. I'm not Please. doing it. Go fuck yourself. Come on, Bright. Do it. Please, no. Rush. The internet needs to see Bright's... Er, not Bright's. Penguin's creative genius. <laughs> Bright's, Bright's creation's creative genius. We are behind schedule. No. Bright is behind schedule. We're actually ahead of schedule. We're always behind schedule. When you actually think about it, since we normally start at 9, we're actually extremely ahead of its schedule. Mm -hmm. Shush. 
Anyway. In other words, this whole hour should be nothing but dicking around, and then we get to the SCPs. No, fuck you. Anyway, I'm gonna say my, uh, getting memed, and I'll, uh, then I will go to reading SCPs. Alright. Buy GTA 5. Steal a car. Shoot some guys up in a drive-by for no apparent reason. Run over some children. Rob a bank. Go home. Play GTA 5. Oh. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> okay that was a good Bye. bait and switch. No, that was I actually... That was actually a good bait and switch because, like, my first instinct was going to go like, "There's not children in GTA." <laughs> <laughs> that was going to be my response. <laughs> oh my god! You weren't expecting that, were you, Hatchet? No shit, I reacted to it, didn't I? <laughs> All right. Time for the first SCP of the night. Alright. Holy shit, this... Oh wait, this one has additional notes. Never mind. Oh, even with the additional notes, it's short as fuck. So I guess we get little information. Alright. What's our number? Hmm? What was that, Hatchet? The number. What's our number? What's the number oh. of the SCP? SCP-1717. It is a disease of plants that occurs only when two factors conflict. SCP-1717-1 is an endogenous pararetrovirus para para found in the genome of all members of the family fo fo foci. When triggered, it induces the production of it. Uh, P O A P O A C E A E. Oh, oh I see. Mm, no. And with SP's wiki's footnotes, okay. that word means the true grasses. Hmm. Hmm. So is there fake grass? Mm -hmm. Nah, things like that get named like that because uh, a lot of times, like, common names of certain species are inaccurate to their actual genealogy. So, for instance, you have things like, like, when I say the word bats, like, what's the first fish that comes to mind? Uh, something I would see in Bass Pro Shop symbol, that bass fish. Yeah, so, so like a, like a smallmouth, largemouth bass. Maybe something like yeah. a rock bass. Yeah, those are sunfish. <laughs> They're in the same family as like red breast sunfish. So there's a so there's what we call basses colloquially, and then there are the true basses, which are uh, a completely different genus that are primarily saltwater. I think I think the most commonly fished true bass is like striped bass. I believe they're true bass. But yeah, so so there's a lot of things like that within taxonomy where like some guy finds a fish in a river and says, this looks like a bass and it has a s small mouth. I shall name this the small mouth bass. And then later people come in and are like, this thing is probably as far away diverged from bass as you can get while remaining in the like artinitarigy. The ray fin fish. Yeah. Like, they're super distantly apart, but they have the same name. So now we have to work around it with taxonomy. It's kind of a pain in the ass, actually. <laughs> yep. It's the same with... uh, Oh, uh, what's the other one I know? Perches? There's, like, the majority of things that people call perch are not true perch. Damn. But anyway, yeah. That's... that's... Right. That's my little ramble about that. All right. On on back to that CP. Hmm. When triggered, it induces the production of novel enzyme CCR, which degrades chlorophyll in, into an 
an analog molecule which is incapable of participating in photosynthesis, yet retains chlorophyll's color long after since of leaves and stems, grasses killed by CCR can unnoticed turn into green hay or straw when they stand. After a plant death, significant quantities of CCR are expressed in the endos endosperm with the seeds, seeds of affected plants as much as 0.8% by weight and rice species. Such species Seeds typically can germinate, but shoot remain viable no longer than 21 days after germination. The flavor of affected grains is unchanged, therefore CCR can go undetected in the food supply. CCR can leach from decaying plant material, not plant matter, sorry, into the soil and is robust enough to kill or injure several generations of plants before deteriorating to non-toxic byproducts. CCR has low or mild acute toxicity in animals and humans, however it accumulates readily in the liver and is toxic long term. Idiopathic Park Parkinsonism commonly develops within six months at acc accumulations over Accumulations. Accumulations. Over 2,500 milligrams, accompanied by either ascites, pleural effusion, or both. At this stage, without a liver transplant, hepatic encephalopathy and death follow within weeks. SCP-1717-2 is an unknown substance that, that induces the expression of the SCP-1717-1 gene. To date, infections of SCP-1717 have been identified in 12 different species in three representative clades. 11 of the 12 are staple grains, including maize, rice, and wheat. And the 12th is a commonly foraged grass in the US. There is no evidence to refute the vulnerability of all Okay, to SCP-1717, a chemical tank recovered from the burned wreck of the Truxton Jackaroo involved in incident SCP-1717 dash Kappa and redacted would have contained no more than 80 liters if full. Within eight days after the incident, SCP-1717 was detected in 6,220 hectares hectares of wheat centered 12 kilometers from where the crop duster was fully intercepted. A 12 milligram sample recovered from the same tank contained no identifiable SP-1717-2, but is strongly suspected to comprise the byproducts from the breakdown of SP-1717-2 under intense heat. Notable in the presence of trace magnesium and arsenic. The Foundation's coroner's analysis of the remains of the pilot was inconclusive. Alternative forensics are underway. And that's it. Okay, so for one, this SCP really hated you with all the scientific terminology. Yes, it did. <laughs> Just get, give, give the lady that's known for not being able to pronounce things well nothing but Latin. <laughs> if if you want i can you can like send me the like like every single one you're like actually yeah i can like actually just like look them up while you're like reading them so i can like help you with them mm -hmm. and the right. future yeah. all right i would normally be doing that but i'm currently going through the mortal combat crypt that yeah. said um I would say that this is an easy uh, world changing mm -hmm. because ultimately this shit isn't going to destroy the world. It's not going to get rid of all humans, but this is basically the same uh, concept behind. Oh, hey, Jerry. There's the same yeah, basic concept behind the effects that come from any type of pollutant or of toxic shit getting into the environment. They're going to get biomagnification that can 
devastate ecosystems. But, you know, li life has this tendency of finding a way, quote unquote, to where things that don't die will end up being able to evolve to handle this shit better. Like, honestly, this is just a run of the mill, really bad virus that's just anomalous and hard to detect. Yeah. So, like, I think world changing is appropriate because it, it would almost definitely, like, if this shit got really out there, like, on pen, on endemic or pandemic levels, it could absolutely change, like, the world's ecosystems irrevocably. But I don't think it's going to be causing any other things that we would normally talk about. Mm -hmm. it, it's, yeah, it's it's kind of like how eating certain foods now for us can become seriously harmful because pesticides accumulate within the foods and then can negatively affect us over the course of our lives. Uh, so. Yeah, I might as well show you the picture of it. I'm just, all I'm going to say is it's picture. <laughs> it looks like a mixture of Photoshop and not Photoshop. I forgot to post it in screen planning. There we go. The fuck? <laughs> That's it. Hi. Yeah, there's just like, there's something mildly <laughs> off about this image. It's hard to place how. Yeah. <laughs> it just looks off. Everything's off in about that image. Yeah. All right. Going on, I think something some things yeah. are on fire. It's really green. It also looks like in like the um the right side, there's like a, a green statue, like a small green statue. Yeah, yeah. I was noticing that. It's yeah, literally irrelevant <laughs> to the SCP. Yeah, like what's that doing there? Well, it didn't, to me, it doesn't look like a statue. It looks like uh like a being. Like some kind of being. Maybe oh, that's just yeah. my... Yeah. <laughs> oh god, the plant disease has gained sentience. It's it's it's, it's starting <laughs> to develop like six tennis. Please wait, don't. Wait, would it count if like six ten has developed the ability to develop a church? Would that count as sentience? That would be sa sapience. sapience. Yeah, I would say yeah. At it's that definitely... point, they would be sapient. It, it's some level of sapient, like, like high already, shit going on there. So it already, it already went past sentience a bit ago before that. Yeah. <laughs> Which is why I think it's probably the most terrifying virus in the SCP universe. <laughs> it ain't a virus, though. It uh, somehow fungus. jumped from... It somehow jumped from virus to fungus. Yeah, we don't know why. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like how I, my brain still hurts at that. We could have just <laughs> kept it as a, like, like I get that it makes a bit more sense as a fungus in retrospect, but we could have just kept it as a virus. Why? Why is it like, <laughs> uh, like? Look, I get it. It's the SCP universe. Like suspension of disbelief isn't going to be the most helpful thing there. Or is going to be pretty important there. But, like, come on. Yeah. Like, fungi and viruses are so unbelievably diverged taxonomically that this just hurts my brain to think about. Yeah, I posted the picture of the next SCP. What? It's just a fucking satellite in a white void. I'm gonna assume it's not it actually in a white void. So here's the thing, its nickname is Hijacked Space Probe. That's a that's a that's a that's a fire band name right there. Uh yeah that's Oh wow. I mean I'm still gonna talk about it, but we won't really have to classify it. Oh, uh, is it already reclassified? Yeah, recently, uh to neutralized. Uh, oh. Oh. Who broke the satellite? Give me names. <laughs> I demand blood. <laughs> Alright, well, let's see 
why I was a keter. All right. <clears throat> SCP-1720 is a lunar orbital probe formerly designated as Pioneer P-3 and launched by the United States on November 26, 1959. Officially, the launch vehicle suffered a malfunction approximately 45 seconds after launch, and the payload was subsequently destroyed. All data following this point has been redacted from public records and false files implanted in government files. During the launch of the probe, the vehicle was struck by an object of presumed extraterrestrial origin entering our atmosphere. From captured footage, the object appears to be no more than 11 centimeter in diameter, dark, irregularly shaped, and possibly crystalline in composition. Following the impact and loss of control, the probe managed to reach low Earth or orbit despite damage to its primary systems. For several weeks following the launch, Sporadic telemetry received by ground stations indicated that SCP-1720 was an erratic, constantly changing orbit consistent with periodic adjustments made via the probe's onboard propulsion systems. After extensive long-range observation, it was determined that not only was the probe acting independently, it appeared to be using its scientific instruments instruments and onboard camera to perform directed study of the surface areas of the Earth, as well as the other orbiting satellites. Wait, so did someone just... So an alien species just hijacked the probe and studying us? Oh. <laughs> oh, this is... I think I know what this is based on. What? There is a, a conspiracy... There is a like extraterrestrial conspiracy theory called the Black Knight satellite. It's basically the idea that there's some weird extraterrestrial black satellite that's going around in Earth's orbit studying us. The main picture for it was a a, a piece of space debris that you can literally like like the main photo uh is is one where you can literally watch video of the astronaut who accidentally dropped the reflective, uh, what is it, like a reflective uh, blanket that's like on the outside of the ships and satellites. Yeah, yeah he accidentally dropped mm -hmm. that, and then a, a, a photo of that, that we can watch that happen live, photo of that was taken by conspiracy theorists and claimed to be the Black Knight satellite. <laughs> Oh, it's oh really dumb and funny, but I think that's what this is aiming to replicate. Uh, Which, it, if so, is really fucking cool. Yeah, there, there are but what and hilarious reports. at the same time. Yeah, and now the question is, what the fuck killed the Black Knight satellite? Yeah, the, there are incidents reports, so we probably can find that out. Yeah. All right, first incident report on. Uh, March 21st, 1961, a close pass using a Soviet intelligence satellite was used to take detailed pho photography of SCP-1720. During this pass, several anomalous events occurred. SCP-1720 matched velocities and with and followed alongside the observing satellite for a distance of approximately 1,200 kilometers, despite it being deemed impossible for the original propulsion system of Pioneer P-3 to perform such a precise maneuver. Extensive growth was observed originating from the impact hole in the side of SCP-1720, though the viewing angle did not permit detailed study. This mess was observed to move and pulsate, suggesting that it may be of organic or biological composition. SCP-1720 circled around and studied the observing satellite before drawing away. Behavior consistently with curiosity, as no transmissions have been detected, that would suggest that SCP-1720 is being controlled externally. This suggests that it may be a living and possibly sentient entity. Second, second incident report. On May 11, 1961, a directed transmission possibly identified 
as originating from SCP-1720 was detected by U.S. satellite Redacted. As the two objects were within 200 kilometers of each other after several minutes of not receiving any response, SCP-1720 approached and made contact with the satellite before drawing away. The transmission was recorded and is now being analyzed. Intelmetry from Redacted is being monitored for signs of unusual activity. Incident Report 3. Uh, telemetry. Oh, telemetry, whatever. Incident Report. Yeah. Incident Report 3. Uh, wait. Incident Report 3. On uh, May 18, 1961, contact was lost with Redacted. Observation from ground stations has confirmed that Redacted is now autonomous and is moving in tandem with SCP-1720 and has been designated SCP-1720-2. A proposal for reclassification to Keter is being sent up, to, up due to SCP-1720's potential for breach of secrecy and further comprom compromise of orbital assets. Alright. Research now. As of July 5th, 1961, SCP-1720 has been reclassified as Keter Level Extraterrestrial Threat by O5 Council Directive. Permission has been granted to attempt to use a prototype anti-satellite missile to disable or deorbit a SCP-1720 instance for testing purposes. Alright, so hold on. That's one, two, three. Alright, Incident Report 4. An anti-satellite miss missile was launched at SCP-1720 on September 8, 1961. All four instances of SCP-1720 not only managed to evade the missile, but somehow disabled and dismantled the weapon, then proceeded to integrate its components into themselves. Due to the continuing threat, to orbital assets, the upcoming United States Fishbowl series of high altitude nuclear tests is being co opted to deliver a high yield warhead in an attempt to neutralize SCP 1720 swarm. Fifth incident report on, on July 9th, 1962. The U.S. High Altitude Nuclear Test designated Starfish Prime was successfully deployed within 2 kilometers of the center of SCP-1720. Damage assessment is currently underway. Final Incident Report. I mean... Following extensive obs observation of the fused wreckage on several instances of SCP-1720 have been declared neutralized as if September 8, 1962, negotiations with the United States government regarding the unexpected high-intensity electromagnetic pulse and subsequent property damage as a result of boosted warhead yield is currently under discussion. So they just basically nuked it. You know what? You know what? I don't think I'm even upset with that. I mean, it, it, didn't, I, uh, it didn't even, like, we didn't even find any information, like, saying it was trying to be evil with what it was style. doing. Yeah, true. Yeah. For all the news, yeah. it just wanted friends. <laughs> yeah, I'd say Spood tier. Rest in peace, Black Knight Satellite. We'll be missed. Rest and piss. What the fuck? No, no, no. I will harm you. <laughs> I'm sorry. Technically, you would be resting in pieces, and I'm sad about that. Child, someday you will wake up and your toes will have been put into your liver. Jesus I don't have a liver Wait, or what? toes, so get fucked. If you don't have a liver, then you're dead. <laughs> All right. If you have, if you don't have toes, you can't walk. Yeah. Posting the next SCP picture walk. next. So, um, I think we're about to get into a cult. 
Mm. Which one? There's quite a few. I don't know. Well, Bright just sent the picture and said she oh, thinks oh, oh. we're getting into a cult. Yeah, that looks like a cult, like a bird cult. Bird cult. <laughs> I can kind of see it. Those kind of look like bills. The yeah, cult of the it's... pelicans. Well, they technically look like a beak design you would put on uh, hoods. So maybe a pelican, maybe like... a falcon. Mm. They look like things I can't say. No. What? I don't know. I don't why. know what it, what you're thinking, but I know what? it's probably not the best. I don't well, know. Yeah, it's since they can't uh, say it. Yeah. Safety. Uh. I, when I look at it, I don't know why, but they kind of look like Russian dolls to me. You know, I was like, yeah, that's kind of what I was up. feeling like, yeah. like Rabushka dolls. Yeah. <laughs> well, we are not putting cultists into each other like Russian <laughs> nesting dolls. Oh, Jesus. I mean, how do we? It could be. It could be that kind of cult. I mean, how do we know? Anyway. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, all right. Let's how see do we what know it's... what's going into other things. Yeah. All right, I want to see oh what his nickname is. All right. Oh. Oh, yeah, this definitely sounds like a cult. Voice of the Light is its nickname. Hmm. That's a very generic name you've got there. Uh, very gay cult. <laughs> oh, great. This SCP has a lot of redacteds. Oh, boy. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Alright. SCP-16... I mean, 1763... Uh, fuck. I keep... I, I had a dyslexic moving, moment, even though I'm not dyslexic. Are you, are you just I feel right insulted, word? Bright. I'm sorry. I mixed up the numbers in my own mouth. Well, oh. yeah, but the... That's something else. That's something else. I'm sorry. That's okay. Just don't don't call it a dys dyslexic moment. I feel things when you say that. Right. I'm sorry. That's fine. The numbers just fumbled in my mouth and went in other directions. That that's called it. That's. I think that's called a mix up. Yeah. All right. Right. Yes. right. That's called a brain fart. Everyone <laughs> has them. <laughs> Also, I am I am glad to announce that I cut the legs off of a wasp lady. Nice. All right. What? I'm playing I... Mortal Kombat. Yeah. Oh, a wasp lady. Anyway. All right. SCP seventeen thirty six. You don't want her to be your wife. And SCP seventeen thirty six dash two designate two classes of human beings who are sh who share related and or. Complementary anomalous beliefs, behaviors, and properties. Okay, yeah, it's a cult. Yeah. <laughs> All instances of SCP-1736-1 and SCP-1736-2 share a common religion that bears strong similarities to Redacted. SCP-1736-1 fulfills the role of a if a shaman or priest in this common religion, whereas instances of SCP-1736-2 fulfills the roles of followers or acolytes. The theological beliefs... Right. Yeah, that... The theological beliefs that compromise hmm. this religion feature a... a cyanic... a deity, and its followers call upon... To return and bring the universe out of darkness and ignorance. This deity is is most mm. often referred to as redacted or redacted. So is... everything's oh my. <laughs> so all of the important information <laughs> is redacted. Of fucking course it is. Ah yes. Uh, is, is there anything on the vent? Thing that oh my gosh uh, it's still not done all right anyway scp 1736-1 will often give sermons in the voice of this deity transcriptions of this of these events often appear uh smart uh 
nonsensical, but SCP-1736-2 will accept any pronouncements of SCP-1736-1 as literal gospel and incorporate them into the general belief system. This appears true to all SCP-1736-2 simultaneously, regardless of their contact with SCP-1736-1 or each other. When SCP-1736-1 does this, SCP-1736-1 emits dangerously high levels of ionizing radiation measured as high as redacted, death within 48 to 72 hours for a typical human subject. Okay. Okay. Let's take a second and ask, why are we redacting the amount of radiation coming from the thing? Like, this just reads as the author being lazy and not wanting to look up, like, the amounts of, like, like how we measure radiation. Like, why, why would they feel the need to redact that? Why is that secret information? Because like, we can literally was... just, like, I can, like, there are literal fucking equations that I could do just right now to determine the amount of radiation coming off of literally any object. Like, Honestly, what... it's probably to try to make sure nobody tries to replicate anything or anything. Oh, yeah, but, like, we can just, like, it's it's an SCP document. The people that would be reading this would be less likely to want to do that and even then how the fuck do you replicate this like That's i just see their point like, i guess I i'm seen... just thinking about all the the special people lately who listen to not so reliable health suggestions oh god or people <laughs> who believe aids virus doesn't exist you know what those That's... all those people also exist wait those people i thought Oh no, I've there's never heard there's that. there's I... multiple organizations that believe AIDS virus and HIV don't exist. I've never heard that. I've heard like Christian nationalists saying that it was that it was a virus that was okay. brought down brought down to earth to punish the gays. Reagan oh, yeah. said yeah. that shit. No, it's but... actually funny is that out of the first organization of the AIDS virus thing. Yeah, uh the head or uh, head of the organization the the woman and her child both died of the virus. Oh God! Also, yeah, but damn, they. If, oh, if... But they said it wasn't the virus; it was just natural causes. Also, uh, <laughs> natural causes. One nun who actually got AIDS from a blood transfusion, and the virginal nun, who was an old woman, died. Also, yeah. damn, if AIDS never existed, I guess I would still have my gr uh, great gay uncle still alive. What? Damn. Mm -hmm. damn. He died of AIDS. Oh, let's take Let's take a moment of silence to remember the child's everyone. great gay uncle. And everyone in general that died of that shit because the fucking government refused to do anything until people let's... were physically screaming at let's the top take... of their phones. Let's take another moment of not silence to collectively uh, envision the day that we will all get to collectively piss on Ronald Reagan's grave. <laughs> anyway. It's my Gotta... favorite activity every 4th well, of July. Penguin, I, I would like to correct you in saying technically they didn't do nothing. They didn't do anything when people screamed. They started doing something when they realized straight people were getting yeah. infected too. People yeah, were that's... screaming way before then. It's just like they're like, "Oh, oh, I forgot." I, it's oh, the gays. I, it's it's it... not just gay people. The gays oh, are screaming. Help the straight people. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, uh, the uh, all all of that is to say, uh, I would not recommend this. This is not an advocation to go do this, but it is theoretically morally correct to dig reagan up again or dig reagan up and shoot him again that I is morally that correct that it's legal for a number of reasons but well yeah it's illegal and that's why i'm saying no one should do it i don't advocate for illegality i'm just saying that it would be morally correct to do so yeah anyway let's continue with this scp what were we talking about oh yeah all right. I was the, having fun taking the piss out of Reagan, or rather putting the piss on Reagan. <laughs> right. 
This hazard does not oh apply to SCP-1736-2, who appear to be able to withstand arbitrary doses of radiation without suffering any adverse effects. Outside containment, SCP-1736-1 and SCP-1736-2 will periodically conjugate in public places such as parks, street corners, parking lots, shopping malls, and other such venues. Once conjugated, SCP-1736-1 will begin preaching to SCP-1736-2. During such an event, approximately 20% of SCP-1736-2 in attendance will attempt to persuade passersby to come and listen to SCP-1736-1, using language such as, Come. He brings enlightenment. <laughs> Shut up, dragon. <laughs> Right. You should not have paused there. How did you pause? <laughs> <laughs> you had no re you had no reason you to know, pause there. Once, yeah. I would love to say I can blame them, but I really can't. I I don't know what to say. Come Bonk. Right? Bonk all of you. <laughs> Okay, well then why did you Bonk. pause there? Oh! Plunk the one who paused Bonk? after saying the word come. Oh, she's doing... C-O-M-E to be clear. Why did you pause the there? A gun? I was doing a track pause because I've seen people, cultists in like TV shows. They they talk like that. Oh, and it's, it's funny every time. Yeah, the, a part of what makes that humorous is because they sound like they're saying other things that they don't mean to be saying. Shut yeah, up. They sound like the, 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 the cult band ghost. Yes, I did not know what their songs are about. If you know, you All right, know, let's I just continue on. Anyway. Let the Holy Ghost inside you. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Be Shut filled up. with the Holy Ghost, right? Shut up. I'm going to end all of you. Anyway. All right, on to more what they said. He is here to lead us away from the darkness and redacted. An estimated 25% of the of non SP 1736 2 2 attendees. Of such a sermon will convert and become an instance of SCP-1736-2 themselves. The remaining audience will suffer from radiation sickness and a typical 50% mortality rate of over the initial month, increasing to 90% over the next redacted years. That's so fucking lazy. God. Upon the death of SCP-1736-1. Some other apparently random instance of SCP-1736-2 will emit a short mm -hmm. burst of radiation and thereafter fulfill the role of SCP-1736-1. Mm -hmm. As of this time, there are estimates that, that between redacted and redacted, SCP-1736-2 remain uncontained and at large. So they, that writer is so fucking lazy. Half of that shit that was redacted need, didn't need to be redacted. Yeah, it's just... It does it's have a low like, rating. Yeah, yeah I it's, wonder it's why. It's similar to how, like, I've seen, like... It's, it's like a good concept, like an interesting mm -hmm. concept, but they just didn't want to go the extra mile to make it feel genuine. I mean, yeah. they're kind of like... Dad. Like, one of the... Like, there was one... I can't remember which SCP it was... But, like, uh, the Vulgan read it out, and he even at the end mentioned, like, there's no need to be doing this much redaction when you're writing your files, people. Like, they, they redacted the D-class numbers. Why? <laughs> Spam on your keyboard and get, like, the numbers. Like Yeah, literally all you feasibly, feasibly need to do is put d dash just mash your fingers on the keyboard. Like, that's all like you have to on do. The keyboard. Yeah, like, like that's let, all let, you have to do. Did you hear what I did? Could have made this this SCP better. Did you did hear I what see... I that I did hatch it? Oh yeah, I heard. I heard you. <laughs> <laughs> you just punch your keyboard. Yeah. Okay. Also, mate, right? Why would you abuse your keyboard? <laughs> 
test there log. There are addendums. There's three addendums. Test log SCP XXX. Wait, no, that's not. That's not what. That sounded bad. Like X, as in, don't know what oh, character yeah. to put there. Uh, SCP redact. <laughs> SCP redacted log or test log. D D class fist punch. <laughs> That's it. That's all you have to do. Yeah. Anyway, would you like to hear the addendums, or are we decide on what to do with it? Um. I mean, we could hear more, but I'm pretty, pretty convinced of where this would go. All right. Yeah, in the lazy class. Oh my god. Anyway, uh... we're not ranking. We're not ranking these files based upon the author's effort. All right. So. Interview log 27. Uh, IG, tell me about it, Dr. Kennerman. Dr. Redacted. He contacted me after the redacted incident. A post-incident debriefing? Yes. If you didn't find it odd at all, he was from a completely different department. After being mind-controlled by some extra-dimensional entity, protocol wasn't high on my list of concerns. He was a level 4. He had the right forms. Who was I to question why? What was the focus of the debriefing? He was interested in any spiritual side effects. Interview number 52. IG. SCP-3... 19 is an alpha level keter. Didn't Dr. Kinnaman's inquiry raise any security concerns? Dr. Redacted. Not really. The request was just for paperwork and records for some historical import. I'd be different if he had request, requested access to the skiff itself or even monitoring the containment records. But all he asked about were the text of the journals we recovered with it. So you just handed over all of the Lawhead Smith journals? Well, we didn't just hand them over. We ran them past site security before we sent uh, past miles and the determination was that there was no that there was nothing critical in them. What I find funny about this redacted doctor is that it, they didn't cover up the full name, like, the first letter is still visible, and it's an R. Oh. <laughs> oh. Dr. Radler, what'd you do? What'd you no! do, Jerry? Jerry! <laughs> no! What did you do? There are other doctors in the SCP universe! <laughs> Radler, no. did, you, did you skimp out on security protocols? <laughs> it's okay. Oh, come on. You, you're all friends here. Anyway. It was a different doctor whose name starts with R. Besides, <laughs> it's my last name that starts with R. <laughs> All right. Final interview, number 98. IG. Dr. Kinnerman made a, a significant number of requests from other departments, didn't he? Dr. Uh, Mr. Redacted. Yes, he did. I don't have the exact figures here, but... Near the end, dozens. Did you find these requests unusual? I've worked at the Foundation for 30 years. Unusual is a pretty high bar around here. Pretty much all the requests were just for research notes, historical documents, interview logs, nothing remotely eyebrow raising. But more than was typical. Typical isn't a word I'd use about our research staff, but yes, more than average. And all these requests were in relation to a fairly limited population of skips, weren't they? He he was the project head for SCP-719, and he believed those other artifacts were all related to it. I wasn't privy into the research, but I remember him saying that someone with contact with SCP-286 had founded the cult that was worshipping SCP-719. All these related skips was SCP-1127, uh, 1, one of them. SCP-1127, I can't say I recall that one. 
That's the end of the interviews. Wait, what's that other SCP they're referencing? Like skits? Uh, hold on, let me see. I can open this a new tab. The safe class entity. It's a series of short films. Let's see, not less far. This is twenty minutes after exposure and fun. This is the series for effect. Each each film that does a different effect to the viewer. The first one. The first film will consider it to be the most humorous thing people will ever see. And apparently... Wait! <laughs> mm -hmm. One D-class subject had to be physically restrained when shown an episode of Monty Python's Flying Circus after exposure. <laughs> what? <laughs> So far, it doesn't look like these do anything. The first film just makes you uh, think that ev everything but the film itself is no longer humorous and offensive. The second one makes you lose uh, interest and mo emotional connections to things. The third one does... Uh, they say it says, Personnel dislike any object that has been machined, processed, or otherwise ma manufactured. And the final film... I can't even say. Uh oh. Uh -oh. oh no. Is it because it's in French or some shit, or because it's I am child here? You are child. <laughs> God damn it. Oh no. Uh, ah, so in other words, the other film is something like the way that Bright treated this article. <laughs> I'll go on Bethan real quick. No, oh. you don't have to. Oh god damn it. They get horny. Uh, let's see. Oh. Let's okay. see. In parentheses is. Sadomasochism, coprophagia, aquanomophilia, partialism, clismophilia, mesophilia, voyeurism, exhibitionism, and aphyxiophilia and sadism, as well as biosophilia, uh, the P word, necrophilia, aponomophilia, and florophilia. So it basically just gives you a bunch of philias. Pretty sure one of those was attraction to shit. Pretty sure corpophilia is it's it's feeling attracted to shit or people shitting. Uh I know like this I don't like this. The zoo one was about animals. I know that. Oh yeah, zoophilia. Yeah. Well, it says Sue Sadism. Like so, wait, if Sue Philly is bad, yeah, Sue Sadism. So, does that even worse is Sue Philly? I'm guessing it's attraction to the suffering of animals. Let me look this up. Zoo Sadism. Zoo Sadist evidence? What the fuck <laughs> is that first suggestion? Zoo sadism. Zoo sadism is pleasure derived from cruelty to the animals. Yeah, so. Uh, there's actually one I don't know. It is voyeurism? Voyeurism? That's just get, get, getting off of watching other people do things. Oh, I thought it was about something with vor. No, no, no. <laughs> it, it's basically the other end of uh, exhibitionism. Exhibitionism, you want to be seen. Voyeurism, you want to see. So, like, the last video, it just makes you extremely horny. And, kind of, yeah, it gives you a whole bunch of questionable philias that you'll probably need to take up with your therapist. Yeah. To safely deal with. Like, yeah. zoo, zoo sadism is 
like one of those things that's like um wait there's actually uh, there's actually two other ones i don't know uh plismophilia and mysophilia uh spelling k l i s m a philia should I deafen myself until the... Oh, the yeah, point? Jerry, go ahead if if you don't feel oh, yeah, uncomfortable. That's fair. I, okay. I, we'll message... Oh, okay, never mind. No. Hold on. It's getting off to enemas. Oh. Uh, it's getting off to having water sh sludged up your ass. Uh, Mysophilia. The other one. M-Y-S-O-Philia. Misophilia. I'm guessing this is the hatred, or I'm guessing this is, uh, no, not misophobia, misophilia. I'm guessing this is sexual pleasure derived from, uh, being hated. Or the yeah. Oh, abnormal attraction to filth. What? <laughs> Misophilia, a sexual dependency on something soiled or filthy, using a kind of undergarment after use. Uh, okay, so we now uh, know what SCP-1127 uh, is. Even though it's safe, it's disturbing. <laughs> I don't like this. Let's, Keep, go... let's, let's just lock those away. Yeah. Let's just... Alright, we're done let's... talking about it, so I'll, I'll ping them. That that was, well, yeah, that's an interesting SCP. I only wait for them to return. Yeah, that's... I hope we didn't trigger J Jerry too bad. Right. Next is Addendum Two, which oh, is. Oh God. A... Yeah, we're waiting on yeah. Jerry. Yeah. Yeah. Addendum Two is Good. incident report, and. Well, are you gonna wait before? Yeah. I'm not going to say it. I'm just going to say what's, what we're going to bring next. And Addendum 3 I mean, is a point, message from the O5 Council. Oh, uh, now that's kind of interesting, but also I feel like we know enough about this SCP. So you think we should to... just mm -hmm. register it? Yeah, just yeah. stop talking kinda, about it. I kind of want to know. Well, the, like, uh, this isn't O5 the one letter. that we had to deafen people for. This is the cult yeah. we're back on to. Okay. But... I want to. I want to know what the O5 letter is, though. So. Hey, it's over. Yeah, it's over. Yeah, we're, I, we're just I gonna... regret my curiosity. Yeah. <laughs> we're just going to read the O5 letter, then decide. Yeah. All right. What the fuck is up with my... What the fuck is this? What is... There Are is... you okay? Do I... Have like an ankle bunion? How the fuck did that happen? I don't what? know. That There's shit. like a hard protrusion, like right next to my heel. Ouch! On my ankle. It doesn't hurt. It's just like I noticed it just now. It's like it feels similar to like the bit of bone that you can feel at the side of your foot. Yeah. Like oh, at the joint. I forgot to make this during the, uh, the stream. Uh, I'll be doing a subathon f for. Uh, starting on the 21st, mainly because, uh, due to the change of shifts for me, I won't be working again until the 29th, after the, after the 17th. Oh! So that's way over a week wow. of no work. Well, oh, on the geez. bright side, you'll at least be around Great. for my birthday. Oh, yeah. I, I will definitely <laughs> join in, like, it just uh, like message me what day it is. Uh, my birthday is the twenty seventh. The twenty seventh. Oh, okay. So the slight bright side, but yeah, that sucks. Yeah. But so, yeah. we'll have to we'll have to do a big Among Us slash card stream for my birthday. Yeah, I'll I'll, I'll fit that around. <laughs> And I'm going to endeavor to get done with my fish deck before then. I haven't Got even it. started it. All right. My birthday must be nothing but fish car. 
<laughs> Ooh, glo oh wait, no, I can't say that. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, hell no. I I caught myself. Hell no. I caught myself. I caught that would myself. Not be Look, one. It sounded like you got it one. That like would not someone. be in. Okay, now so, I'm tempted to just one, add that it wouldn't be fuck of it. <laughs> no. I hate you people. No, I don't hate you people. I hate you, Bright. <laughs> anyway, time to read the O5 letter. Okay. Distinguished council members, I am bringing you the conclusion of 12 months of investigation by the Inspector General's office into the disappearance of Dr. Jeff Kinnerman in a sus sequent appearance of SCP-1736. It is the opinion of the IG that these two events are indeed linked and you all have a copy of our report. 1,500 pages of interviews, documents, and evidence supporting that conclusion. It is our conclusion that Dr. Jeff Kinnerman, under no duress, comp compulsion, or obvious abnormal influence, began a path of research intending to recover and document a proto-religion associated with a number of SCPs related to SCP-719. Dr. Kinnerman's behavior subsequent to the start of this research leads to the conclusion that at some point his academic interest turned into the actual belief and his efforts turned from recovery of this religion to its recreation. Aided by his compl complac complacency of our staff, the chain of command, and the Morris of bureaucracy we've constructed, he was able to act with relative Im impunity. His ability to amass such research material without anyone questioning him was a colossal failure of security. It is the opinion of the IG that Dr. Jeff Kennerman created a Keter level SCP and walked out of the building with it in his pocket. Note. The DVD recording created by Dr. Kinnerman is tentatively designated SCP-1736-0 and, and its recovery is of paramount importance. Dash 05 redacted. And that's the 05 okay. letter. And you see, here's the thing. This is once again... An extremely creative SCP. I like this SCP. But my brain fixates on the tiny little bits of fucking laziness. <laughs> like, you went so far with a good SCP, a good idea. Why did you not take the time to just look up how we, how we measure radiation? It's not that hard. Wait, mm -hmm. so you remember how it said the religion was based around 719? Yeah. All right. I'm going to take a picture and you're going to see what 719 is. Oh, God. No, please, no. Oh, no. No, it's actually uh, really funny. Oh, okay. 719 isn't the thing we just talked about in relation no, to No, 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 no. That was like 1179. Okay. Uh, Come on, Discord. Thank you. So so many Latin. <laughs> <laughs> That's seven nineteen. Uh, um. Uh. <laughs> it's just. <laughs> it's an old TV with a cartoon dog, and what looks to be a printer on it. Yeah. Why? <laughs> Why is the image so bad? <laughs> that's the funny thing is that's actually the article's picture. That's it. Oh. Okay. So either way, with the with the cult SCP, um, God, now I cannot stop fixating on this bump on my ankle. What the fuck is this? Anyway, here's yeah. Hatchet. Um. Um. Uh, there's a bump on my ankle? No, um. I would put this. Uh. 
I don't know where I would put this. I don't... Did it even... S I mean, I know it said it was like radiation or whatever. But it, so much was redacted, so we can't really tell how dangerous it is. Well, no, it's pretty clear, like, the levels of danger that it has. It's, right. It's... Yeah, it, it's dangerous it, enough that it's redacted. Well, so. the, those danger levels are commonly just radiation levels, but um, mm. the the thing that was going on is, uh, you know, we got this weird ass cult that has these uh random bits of gospel that show up, and you have people that go out and preach the word of this gospel, and you'll have people who are already in the cult gather to listen to the gospel as well as grabbing like encouraging people to come and listen in so basic like street uh street evangelism stuff but 50 percent of the people who listen will become cult members and 50 percent of them will get radiation poisoning <laughs> yeah so, oh, poison. so, oh, so if so if that happens, you either join the cult or you die one of the most painful deaths imaginable. And anyone who's affected by this is going to end up affected by it. How do you I, avoid this cult, though? That's the question. I want to I would, a cultist, but you die anyway as a radiation poisoning. Is that possible? Oh uh, no! It it, it it said it said that the cult members are immune to radiation, to the radiation effects of the so other cult stuff. So can you decide stuffs. to become a cult leader? I mean, I don't know. It's not cult leader. It's just cult member. Or not cult mm -hmm. leader. You know what I? Just I said? think the cult leader stays the same. Yeah. Either way, um, given all of that, um, I would say that this could easily. My first instinct is country or continent. I don't think this is going to destroy the world, but it could do some serious yeah. damage. Like serious damage to like the population. Especially since shit. radiation takes a long time to like clear up. If you survive at all, yeah. Yeah. That's the annoying thing. They redacted how like the average of how long someone lives after the event. Why are you redacting that information? Come on. Right. Maybe they like just that would really... actually be useful. Yeah. Oh no. Here's 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 my idea. They redacted that information because if you knew how long after the event the person died, you could get a rough estimate as to how much radiation they were exposed to, and they didn't want to give an estimate on the radiation count, so they also redacted that. So they have to redact the ages, so they don't have to think about you radiation. Sound like a conspiracy theorist, Hatchet. <laughs> yeah, conspiracy <laughs> against redacted. <laughs> it's 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 even. This isn't listen, a conspiracy listen, theory, though. Listen, listen. There are two. There are two things. Okay, let's use Occam's razor. On, on this bitch, okay? There are two possibilities. Either A, he avoided the date setting so that no one could go back and check how much radiation it is, or B, he's just fucking lazy, and I'm choosing the first one. Are you okay? No! Do you want to talk about it? I can't talk about it. My brain cells are dying from what we talked about when you were when you were deafened. The thing is, I think I'm leaning more to, uh, I'm gonna guess French. to country than continent because this SCP has been put on O5's radar. Like they want it got stopped. That I guess means my... it's probably not gonna spread very well from now on. Yeah, I guess my biggest uh thought on that is there is the potential of someone slipping under the radar and that person could easily go cross borders. Yeah. And like spread the gospel and shit. Yeah, spread spread the yucky gospel. And un, un... Sorry, I was reminding me of that song. <laughs> but, uh... That's no, okay. What's, like... I don't know, yeah. Like, I'm hovering between continent and country. Because I think in all actuality, it'll stay where it is thanks to the SCP uh, Foundation. But at the same time, there is that chance that 
uh, like one or two of those guys that do the evangelism events flips under the radar goes to a different country and let's say that they happen to go to a country that has less monitoring like rural africa like yeah there's like there could be some really really bad consequences there oh yeah and i say rural africa because granted i don't know for sure but i'd be willing to guess that the scp foundation running largely off of a currently capitalistic society would have less infrastructure to study anomalies that are based in africa i.e they will look into events at a slower rate and have less success in finding events wouldn't that depend on the country in africa that that's why i said rural africa like I'm think I'm thinking the particularly poor African countries like like South Africa, Egypt, uh, those places are probably going to have very fast SCP responses. But once we get inward, like Uganda, Ethiopia, uh, yeah. those really rural countries that got just completely fucked over by colonialism, I think those are the countries where this could spread the most and under SCP's radar. Right. Mm-hmm. So point being. I don't fucking know. I'm leaning it more onto country. What is everyone else saying? Country's probably the bet, the like yeah. safest bet. Yeah, there needs to be like a multiple countries option. It's like I don't yeah, think this would span to the size of a full continent, but well, I like think Australia. Country simply because it's yeah. under the radar and it's less like, and it doesn't seem likely. That it will head to one of those rural countries. That's true. I, mean, I am largely it, basing. It's very point. unlikely it will at this point. Yeah, it's so, too late for it. Wait, yeah, let's let's. I just realized something. If the SCP Foundation really wanted this to be stopped, why didn't they just contact the GOC? Hey. <laughs> Maybe they didn't want it to stop. Well, just or remember, you know that... they they are not the on. Un- the, always on the best of terms with the GOC because the GOC can be a little trigger happy. Yeah, yeah. like may, may, maybe if you're wanting to get rid of an issue, you don't turn to the guys that fucked up the chair for no reason. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think whenever people think of the GOC, they typically think of that poor, poor chair. I mean, I've ne- I never thought chair. you could give a chair PTSD, but then the GC. The GOC is like, yeah, the, the, yeah, the, the, (laughs) like, like, we've got one of those meme formats. Uh, like, like, we've got nobody. I bet you can't get, like, yeah, nobody. I bet you, I bet you can't give a chair PTSD. The GOC, (laughs) try me. (laughs) No, No, they're just bet. Yeah, I'm going to write this out now. Anyway. Oh no, no that's uh, probably be easy to make with pictures too. I'm also going to post the next SCP picture. Uh The only picture I could find it it, it does match the article itself, um but it's a Pokémon card. <laughs> well, actually, oh no. Well, no, it like the person who made it to like Pokémon card like style actually did really good on it if you look at it. Yeah. It looks really nice. Uh, but its nickname is really sad. The obsolete laptop. There we go. Nobody. You can't give a chair PTSD. The GOC. Bet! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, uh, were you ready to read about the obsolete laptop? Yes. Sure. All right. SCP-1739 is a Dell Latitude D800 laptop. SCP-1739... I used to have one of those. Well, <laughs> you had the I had one. one of those. I had you're, this you're SCP. You're having no salt nostalgia. It, oh my god. I need it. Where did I put that thing? I, Are you I have feeling my... guilty? No, I'm not feeling guilty. I'm thinking, like, I had my Wakaliwood sticker on it. Y'all know what 
uh, Waka- Wakaliwood is like the the publishing group that did Who Killed Captain Alex. It's one of it's one of the greatest groups on earth of all things. Uh, all right. I I I have my Wakaliwood sticker on it, and now I want to find that. So uh, I do want to ask you this question with the the next sentence. If this is true with your computer. SCP-1739 has proven impervious to all attempts at destruction. Oh no, that that bitch died years ago. <laughs> that that bitch was like gasping for air after all the shit I downloaded onto it. <laughs> what did you do? What do you think? I don't oh, know. I'm a t- I'm listen, a child. Listen, child. I was a. I I was. A particularly minded teenage boy freaking out about the prospect of losing net neutrality. Okay. So erotic fan fiction was what you downloaded? No. Sure. <laughs> sure, child. Yeah, sure. Let's go with that. <laughs> shut shut up. I can't talk about it. Shut the anyway. fuck up. Let's move on. <laughs> but erotic fan fiction. I, I, I read a f- shut. <laughs> Hold on. Shut. Dragon shush. I actually read further ahead and it's it got even better. An executable, uh, f- an executable file named gofetch.exe is located on SCP-1739's hard drive. Executing hmm. gofetch.exe opens three windowed applications. The first window contains an input field requesting date and time and Unix timestamp format. Only dates between January 1st, 2004, uh, 18. 118 GMT and what's GMT? Uh, maybe Global Standard Time. Maybe, yeah. Or I ain't, uh, here. I'll just look it up. Yeah, cause now. Yeah, let's can... get that. Uh, GMT time. What is what is GMT time? Greenwich Mean Time. So, I don't think that's what that is. Uh, Just a hunch. Is it actually, though? Like, no, I, I typed in... Thing. Child, I typed in GMT, and the first thing that comes up from Google is Greenwich Mean Time. It is the time zone that encapsulates and is used by... Uh, let's see, that's... Uh, Iceland, sections of Africa... The UK and Ireland. Oh, Ireland. So it's Brit. Yeah. So it's basically it's 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 Brit time. Yeah, Brit time. Ew. Anyway, and current time at the t- and current time at the time of input are accepted with all others resulting in an error message. Subjects who enter a number within the correct range will disappear. The second window appears to be a client application for an unknown chat protocol. Users will automatically give in the handle Branch Brian. After subjects disappear, the chat client can be used to communicate with individuals given handles that are variations of the name Isaac. These individuals claim to be Foundation personnel existing in a divergent timeline created by the disappear subject's temporal relocation to a destination determined by the input Unix timestamp. The divergent timeline is reported to have been identical to this timeline in all aspects until the, the spontaneous appearance of experimental subjects. If such claims are true, SCP-1739 is capable of transporting subjects backwards in time as far back as January 1st, 2004. The third window is a computer-generated animation of a dog chained to a dog house. If a number of successfully entered the animation changes to a display of a woman unleashing the dog and throwing a ball into the distance, the ball then runs off screen after the ball. After a time period ranging from three days to seven months, the Isaac handle disconnects from the chat. At this point in time, the animation changes once more to display the dog running back with it. The deflated remains of the ball between its teeth. The dog discards the remains, which fly off off screen, while the woman chains the dog back to, to the doghouse. On January first, two thousand four, 
SCP-1739 spontaneously appeared in the containment and containment sector redacted, which was previously vacant. Okay, so there's a there's two level four clearances. Should we keep going further, or do we need, or are we good? Might be good to continue. Yeah, cause I'm st I'm confused as how the fuck is this a keter? <laughs> yeah, like as of right now, this is just an easy safe class. I don't see. I I'm guessing it I turns mean, people it, into it grilled cheese. It sounds like a nice computer, but it doesn't sound dangerous. Am I missing something? Right. It's literally just an indestructible computer that you can use normally as long as you don't run that exe file. Yeah. Right. And honestly, why the fuck would you want to click a random exe file? Especially after Sonic exe? Anyway. Sonic exe probably didn't even exist as a story when that computer was made. Probably not. Oh, it you know? might have. But it's not have. a too old model of computer. Yeah, anyways. Chat log 12. Forward. Three weeks previously on January 20th, 2014, at 10.30 p.m. GMT, D-22314 had imputed a number corresponding to the present time minus five seconds into SCP-1739. Smart supervising level four researcher, Dr. Redacted, represents Branch Prime. Isaac 67. Does the Black Moon howl? Branch Prime. Data expunged. Password exchange protocol is working then. I'm sending you the analysis of SCP-1739 taken after D-22314 appeared in this timeline. Isaac 67 has uploaded redacted. Our research team compared it to the analysis of SCP-1739 that was taken before D-22314 appeared. The two are identical. There's nothing that suggests that a change in this timeline instance of SCP-1739 is what's causing us to spontaneously log out. Hmm. And at the same time, the change that it that I'm just some construct of the executable file itself is becoming increasingly unlikely, isn't it? Well, who knows? Chat log 19. Isaac 67. Does the Black Moon howl? Branch Prime. Data expunged. This is a breach of protocol, but it doesn't matter. In all likelihood, the O5 is going to censor this on your end, but they're too busy to stop me on this one. What's happening? I have answers. I know why I'm going to disconnect very shortly, but first, a question. Is your world ending? I don't know what you're talking about, and no, I have no reason to believe that the world's ending. I hope you're not acting. Well, I know you're not acting, because I'm not. And no amount of pressure or coercion can, cor can change that. Which means the same for you. That's all I needed. I want you to go to the O5 Council when they ask you why you've come. Give them this document. I-667 has uploaded, redacted. The cause of the disconnect is the destruction of this universe. But while this universe is ending, yours isn't. There's only one point of divergence. We don't know whether this thing is meant to put people on a lifeboat or exile them into a sinking ship. The latter seems far more likely, regardless. I want you to read the document before you give it to the O5. Look for the warning signs. There are certain patterns that hold the universe together, and I know, but you don't have that heat death is only the beginning. Afterward, three hours later, Isaac 67 disconnected. That's just from the first level four clearance. So, ah! so that means that the world ends when they disconnect on their side. Yeah, on their side. Oh, So no. this SCP is constantly destroying worlds. That's not what this says at all. This means that one of the people that went through had oh. the world they went to was destroyed. Yeah. So and it, when, it, when, it, yeah. when it turns off... Uh... This is fucked. 
Anyway, we, we, should we read the, the final level 4 clearance? Yeah. Alright. Because as of right now, this still seems like a safe class. Forward. Experimental procedure has been reproduced using D-22358 as test subject. Isaac-132 does the Black Moon Howl. Branch Prime, that expunged. I've realized that they really could not have chosen a worse person to research this object. I would strongly recommend that you resign immediately. Please explain. I'm surprised that you'd think that. It's written in glasses of water and daily class 5 paramedication, but don't worry about that. I'm trying to be as private as I can. You already know what I know. What's your point? I'm sorry and thank you. For what? At last, I found a meaning to life and existence. This entire universe was made for one specific terrible purpose. I'm about to fulfill that purpose. SCP-1739 has nothing to do with exile or salvation. The lifeboat slash sinking ship analogy that the other one proposed is incorrect. SCP-1739's usage is responsible for responsible for the destruction of these universes in the first place. Oh! Ultimately, yes. ultimately, the animation in the third window is the key. It's nothing but a cheeky metaphor for the ap apocalypse. What? Let me explain. I follow the plan. I know the warning signs. I use them to see the end coming. It's no natural phenomenon. All signs seem to indicate that what's about to destroy us is actively malevolent. It comes out of time and space and tracks its prey. We can even see where it's last been. The universe that was destroyed in the previous experiment. The end is the dog. Something incomprehensibly terrible. In both senses of that word, something that can destroy an entire universe just by passing its shadow over it. But I can also see that somebody had chained the dog to the ha do dog house. Wait, why is there a problem if the dog is chained? I'm not quite sure about the about that, that question yet. Not that I have the time to answer it. Anyway, I guess that either the chains are too weak, the dog is too strong, or there are some things that even chains cannot hold. But the Foundation has encountered the same problem before, so we can infer what's happening here. We've contained items that can't be held entirely by chains. If we can't completely stop the object from doing something, the object can find a way around wh whatever restrictions we place. Then sometimes the best bet is to take off the chains in a controlled setting and let the object's anomalous properties manifest where they won't damage anything important. In this case, the object is the object in containment, and the SCP-1739 is, the, is a very elaborate and specifically that design special containment procedure operating on that same principle. I think I understand. Upon reflection, that's quite sickening. This device could send people back into the past, creating entire branch timelines. As sacrificial di distractions, to what end? Throwing balls and a game of fetch to keep the dog's energies in check. Ah, well as an employee of the Foundation, I can't complain, can I? You wouldn't complain either way. Yes, you're right. I'm very selfish after all. Oh, well, that's not the point. Somewhere there is a person living in the timeline where SCP-1739 never deposits a traveler from the future. This person very much does not want the mad dog to grow too restless. Your foundation and your O5 council should hope that they are existing in this timeline. Stop sending people back into the past. Alright, I'll forward this information to the O5 Council. Even if I don't object, it's certainly it's cer certainly that the Ethics Committee will. How much time do you have left? A couple seconds. But I spent my entire life patiently waiting, and I have no intention of hurrying now. It's rather surreal for you, isn't it? It is. I'm envious. <laughs> well, it's been a pleasure. Isaac132 has distant disconnected. Afterward, following the evaluation of the previous test logs, the O5 Council, Council has transferred Dr. Redacted to a different project. Ethics community investigations are ongoing. 
Addendum 1739A, Operation Smokescreen is underway to prevent SCP-1739 from depositing travelers from the future. Research regarding SCP-1739's primary focus is to contribute to these efforts. Furthermore, the O5 Council has indefinitely banned any expert experimentation with SCP-1739 that involves sending travelers to the past. And that's the entity. Hmm. Oh, so it's an indestructible dis destroyer of worlds. I guess my big thing here is I I don't really see how this is here. Because like, yeah, it seems to be able to destroy other realities. And it is potential that someone will be sent back into the past and end up destroying our reality. But the laptop is the object, and it's not the thing. Like, if we just leave it alone, and that's going to happen anyway, then it's going to happen. Besides that one aspect of its functionality... It's literally just an indestructible laptop. You can just put it into a box. The laptop doesn't try to escape. I think this is why it's a good idea that they've started to switch over to using more classifications that are specifically based around their danger level. Because if I had yeah. to put this somewhere, I would put this as like the base classification as safe and then the danger level as high as it can go. Yeah. But we're working with what we have now, so... Uh, I guess because it's connected to some kind of thing that's causing end of realities, it would probably most fit in XK. I'm just iffy about whether or not it should be considered a Keter or not. Yeah. That's it most certainly is dangerous in that respect, but I just yeah, I think not... it would be an extremely dangerous safe class. Yeah, you're not thinking as part of CK. Oh wait, yeah, is it that? That's oh, yeah. the reality is it that... one. <laughs> That's yeah, the reality is it... one. Is it that the worlds are being destroyed, or that their entire realities are being destroyed? Wait, no, it just said it only said world, so yeah. That's all it said yeah. in the article. It didn't say reality, oh, it said it, world. Aderna? Aderna? Yeah. Oh, okay. It sounded like you like tried to say something and then broke up. I guess Aderna didn't have to say anything. Oh, I was. Your what? I think Adarna's having Discord troubles. Uh... Oh no, I am. I'm having uh, getting my thoughts together. Troubles. Um... Yeah. Ah, uh, okay. Anyway, this so fat we... drunkard is kicking my ass. What? Mortal Kombat. Alright, so the next SCP... Actually, I think it kind of sounds interesting. It, it sounds interesting. Hold on. Hold I'll that thought. I, uh, hold that thought. I need coffee. Okay, we can go to intermission. I'll just post a picture. Yeah. There you go. You can see it before you get coffee. <laughs> it's the black helicopter. Yeah, I'll be back. Alright.
reason. Fuck you, oh. Streamlabs. Piece of shit. Oh, yeah. You know that Creative Commons thing that I've been doing? With YouTube? Yeah. Yeah, you know how they say they don't support the cop uh, copyright claims people? Like, they don't yeah. choose sides or whatever? Yeah, I call bullshit, because... I remember labeling everything I uploaded as Creative Commons license. Like, you had to choose either standard license, YouTube's license, or Creative Commons. Yeah. Get a copyright claim on the Castle Crashers thing. Video I did. What? And guess what happened? It was what? changed to standard YouTube license. The, the fuck? The... That's what I call bullshit. Bullshit they don't support them. Motherfucking bullshit. I think you should change the... You should, if you haven't already, you should definitely change it back to Creative Commons. That's bullshit. Actually, when you have it in Creative... When it, anything that's, like, uh, under a copyright claim, you cannot change the license. The fuck? Yeah. So, you'd have to remove it just so you could... Either you, uh, fight back, or... You'd have to remove submit. it and put it back. Either submit or fight back. That's basically it. I'm not one of those type of people that submit. hate to say it. I mean, you've already seen me have a copyright strike on one of my channels. You definitely know I don't submit. So this time, uh, it's not like they can actually fight back. Because what I've noticed is it's because I, I have the license posted in the description, as well as I send it to them, they don't seem to fight back anymore. They just, like, wait the 30-day period. And then the claim gets released. The only thing that bothers me is that they don't ask, like, the money to not no longer be monetized. Like, the videos are allowed to be monetized if I get ability to monetize my videos I, that just confuses me well that 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 breaks the purpose of copywriting a video what would be the point of copywriting it I don't know I've given up trying to understand these dumbass motherfuckers I'm sorry. It's fair. I return. Oh, hey, Hatchet. We My weren't head hurts severely. You good? Yeah, I've been... There's a, there's a cold front moving through where I live, and that always gives me a headache. All right. Maybe you should lay down. Yeah. No, I'm fine. Right. You, you gotta keep in mind, I've spent my entire, like, I think I've spent probably a total of half of my existence with a severe migraine. Like, well, not a severe migraine, but with a headache of some sorts, this is nothing. Ah. Uh, I'm oh. just in pain. Okay. But also, looking at this uh image i'm wondering if we're going to get another scp that seems to be inspired by a conspiracy theory yeah. well Maybe. because because yeah. this image makes me think of the black helicopter conspiracy theories the idea that there's these unmarked black helicopters flying around america surveying everyone you know 
it's you might be correct because its nickname is called the Phantom Helicopter. Yeah. Although in actuality, if I'm not mistaken, uh, the black helicopters were literally just another one of those things that the CIA did to like stoke conspiracy theories because it actually helped them hide their actual conspiracies. Yeah. Similar to the men in black. Like they would just have guys get into these black helicopters and fly around for a while and fucking a alien nuts out in the boonies would lose their shit. Yeah. Alright. Okay, maybe not what we thought it would be. Alright. SCP-1745 is an intangible Soviet helicopter. Superficially, it is identical to the MIL-MI-24D, though it appears to be entirely incorporeal, transversing through any and all physical obstructions with no observed effect on either body. Given its absence of mass, the reason for its visibility is unclear. In addition, SCP-1745 generates noise consistent with a non-anomalous aircraft of identical make, despite no clear source of the sound. The apparent condition of the aircraft varies between featuring severe damage and being pristine. SCP-1745's presence causes immediate damage in all electrical circuitry within the approximate 300 meter radius. The exact cause of this damage is unknown, though it universally demonstrates signs of severe overheating due to this close range electro electronic observation recording and testing of SCP-1745 is generally impossible. Wait, then how did they get the picture up that close? <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> Wait a minute. Picture. <laughs> In which case, yeah, I think I think this is based upon the black helicopter conspiracy theories. Because I remember another aspect of them being a bunch of people claiming that they're fucking handmade radio electronic gizmos that they made to track aliens or whatever started malfunctioning coincidentally when the when the CIA agent piloting a black helicopter went over. And it absolutely had to do with that helicopter and not my extremely bad electronic building skills. <laughs> Conspiracy yeah. theories are so funny, but so fucked at the same time. Yeah. Alright. I'm, I'm fascinated by a lot of them, but... Blah. Yeah. So I find them interesting until they start getting in the way of actual and intelligent like yeah research yeah yeah like they're a fascinating thing to study but they're also obviously not a good thing to encourage there's there's very it's very rare that there's a cons like a conspiracy theory that's actually like has something to it like i think the two biggest examples are uh fbi killed mlk and uh the U.S. government was behind JFK's assassination. Like, those are probably the most substantiated conspiracy theories, and even then, there's not hard evidence for them, so we shouldn't be going around saying, no matter what, 100% this did happen. Less of an oh, yeah. issue with the MLK thing, because MLK's death was just so consistent with the way that FBI treated Black Panthers at the time. But, uh, yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, but when like for black rights groups, they were all called terrorists at the time, including yep. Martin Luther King, not just the Black Panther Party. And well, yeah. uh, while none of them were violent groups, they were treated like a violent and aggressive groups simply for asking for equal rights. Yeah, and, and the reason they don't do that with Martin Luther King is because people like him now. Yeah, like the uh um it's the what was I gonna say? 
The other thing that I saw people point out uh, is like all all of these civil rights groups were obviously on the FBI shit list, like at all, because the FBI fundamentally exists to uphold the status quo. But it's like specifically a pattern of black, like civil rights movers who are also socialists, who are also very left leaning economically, that end up getting shot. Yeah more frequently like martin luther, if i remember correctly martin luther king jr they obviously did try to do things like try to convince him to auto homicide we literally have that letter from the fbi uh like they did that and then at some point mlk started more openly talking about how capitalism is fucked and it's just a little bit after he starts really getting down to talking about that that he shot in a town that has a lot of FBI presence at the time. He knew what was going to happen, didn't he? Honestly, any civil rights mover at that time had to expect that at some point someone was going to come up to them and shoot them. As fucked as it is to say that, that's the general political climate at the time. Well, they had to be ready to deal with it. Had- it, apparently he had been expecting it for a while because they had already been following him so closely and taping his every like uh, phone call which sounds crazy as shit especially for back then yeah like uh anyway so yeah point being because we do not have hard proof because the FBI has not openly said we did in MLK it's still considered conspiracy theory. I just also think that it is by far the most evidenced conspiracy theory out there. And like we can talk about how some conspiracies, like you can kind of see where they're coming from from a motive standpoint, but most of the time fall flat when it comes to means. Like uh NASA like the US faking the moon landing. Like you can understand that there'd be a motive to fake the moon landing you want to beat the russians and it's almost the end of the decade the, our our dead president the, M, uh jfk he said we we should endeavor to reach the moon within the decade we have to do it in this decade but we aren't gonna make it so i guess we just fake it like that is a logical line of motivation but the U.S. government didn't have the technology to fake the footage in the way that it is consistent with scientifically what would be going on on the moon, specifically in the way that the shadows are cast. The light in the mm-hmm. videos is way too bright to have been done in a studio while also leaving a single shadow, which would obviously be coming from the fucking sun. If they were in an actual sound studio or in an actual sound stage at the time, they necessarily would have had multiple lights aimed on the astronaut actors, which would have cast multiple shadows. The only feasible way to achieve this would to be used at the time non-existent laser technology to cast, like to build an entire wall of laser lights and cast that light in that order like in that manner in one direction that's the only feasible way that they could have done it and that technology simply did not exist at the time yeah what this is to say is that the moon landing happened but there's a little bit of meat to it that's the best conspiracy to me like there's a little tiny chunk of meat something based in like an actual logical sequencing of motivation or reality but it inevitably goes off the rails, and then we get into what the fuck are you talking about? Yeah. Tangent right. over. Yes. <laughs> All right. Anyway, on back to the SCP. Yeah. Oh yeah. We. <laughs> I, I had this tangent in the middle of an SCP. Yeah. Continue. Yeah. SCP seventeen forty five's presence causes immediate damage in all. Oh wait. Sorry. Wait. Yeah. Fucks up electronics. Generally. Yeah. All right. There it is. SCP-1745 appears to be att- attracted to artificial radio signals. Okay, you're not wrong. That shit is the black. Yeah. <laughs> <it's>... 
<laughs> it's absolutely this is absolutely based on the black helicopter conspiracy theories. That's great. <laughs> We've had two SCPs tonight that are based upon weird, like uh a alien conspiracy theories. This is great. Yeah. I'm sensing a theme tonight. <laughs> All right. Gondor. My snake cat has come to get me to get pets. Nice. Snake cat? I, I nickname my cat Yomangondor Snake Cat. Oh. Yomangondor Gondor and Snake Cat. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, how it determines whether or not these signals are artificial and whether it is able to to decipher slash comprehend the content of said signals is undetermined. With this aspect of SCP-1745 has allowed for the implementation of current containment protocols, it also presents a clear danger due to its tendency to be drawn to human civilization, its indestructible and intangible nature, and its adverse effect on electronic equipment. A breach of SCP-1745 could potentially result in an, an arcane technological collapse. Yeesh. SCP-1745 was transferred to Foundation custody by Russian correspondent Redacted in 1994 following a series of potential breach events. Previous containment protocols developed by GRU Division P aka Psychotronics, were adopted by, by Foundation staff and all available documentation on SCP-1745's history prior to 1994 was obtained from this exchange. Presently, it is believed that SCP-1745 originates from a MIL-MI-24D helicopter piloted by GRU-P agents and shot down over Redacted in 1979 due to open hostilities between Redacted and the Soviet Union at the time. Okay, we all know it's probably the U.S. Yeah, I don't... What? This is Cold War. Why are we redacting that? <laughs> yeah, we can tell it's the U.S. <laughs> like, the U... Like, I mean, it could be some other country that was sided with the U.S., but, like... Yeah. why 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 redact that but not the ussr right it, it's just like in hindsight some like scp agent that's a massive patriot just doesn't want to bring up the united states in relation to the soviets at all like he just <laughs> wants to wipe out history like this is weird mm -hmm. i don't this is this is weird yeah all right it is now believed that the attack targeted the GRU-P specifically. While the incident yielded no survivors from on board the vehicle, a series of documents were recovered from the titanium case within the wreckage. I mean, we already know its classification because it already said what it was. If it broke out. Well, it didn't say an like it's not going to end the world. It's just going to cause an electronical crash. Well, the technological collapse. Yeah, like, yeah. How do we classify that? World changing? Probably. Like, it's not the end of the world. It's just going to cause a shit ton of social upheaval. Yeah. Oh, I just realized this would be really bad if it flew over a hospital. No. Oh. No shit. That's the logic. <laughs> Dude, that's, I mean, granted, they have backup generators, but I doubt that it would leave those untouched as well. But right. that's kind of the point of, like, negative effects of a technological crash, dude. <laughs> uh, should we read the notes, or? I mean, this seems pretty conclusive. Yeah. If y'all want to read the notes, then I'm fine with it, but. Uh, Jerry, Adarna? I have no interest in the notes, but sure. Uh, okay, so we got three no's. Uh, Adarna, you want to hear the notes? I mean, two no's, sorry. I'm fine either way. Okay, so we already agreed it's pretty much world-changing. I mean, 
it doesn't seem like it's trying to do a real threat. It's just attracted radio signals. Yeah, it's just. I think it's probably just a non like a non sentient sentient helicopter anomaly that's just like super turned on by radio signals. I can say that because the child's not here. Oh hearing. no. Yeah. <laughs> so like, yeah, I think world changing is the most appropriate. It's not going to end reality, but it, 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 it would cause one hell of a problem to most of the world. Yeah. I'm fighting myself. What? I'm fighting myself. Right. The next SCP, which is... Uh, Dragon's Legacy is its nickname. Oh! Uh, it's not what I thought it was. Now I'm looking what at the it? picture. Why is there a record on screen? This is the Dragon's Legacy? <laughs> a vinyl? <laughs> That's a pretty shit legacy. <laughs> Just a single vinyl tape? Come on, man. Aim higher. Not even more than that? Yeah. Take just one, one vinyl. to completely destroy a vinyl. Oh, great. This Damn. Also... Oh, no, Hatchet. You're going to hate this. There's Why? a bunch of black bars, which means redacted uh, information. <laughs> Why? Why? Are... Why have people... Be... Okay, no, no, no. Let's you know what? Second. I'm gonna make a joke. I'm sorry, Hatchet, but you're crying and redacted. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow, this actually SCP doesn't have a high rating. It's only that's, that's a good joke. That's a really good. That joke. is a very good joke. Yeah, but also, joke. um, yeah. I guess let's hope that there's. I guess let's hope that this isn't again just fucking lazy writing. Cover it up with black bars to excuse the fact that I can't fucking look up how to measure what the fuck a lot of radiation is. Fucking Christ. Yeah. I can literally, yeah. you know what? Here, let, let me give you a second. Uh, Would uh, you like to sta know? Start, starting. No, 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 no. No, no, no. Give, give me a second. Starting now. One, two, three. Someone else count for me. Four, five. Uh, Six, Six, seven, seven eight, eight, nine, ten. ten. And that's it. That's that's all the time I needed to look up radioactive measurements and find the amount of radioactivity it was reported in Bakrel BQ, which is the International Unit, or Yuri CI, which is the unit used in the United States. That's all I had to do. And I misspelled it too. I had, I I eviscerated the spell spelling of radioactive measurements because I was stressed. I had I have radioactive with two V's <laughs> measurements with Oh, what did I do to measurements? No, no measurements. Oh yeah, I, measurements with M E S S measurements. <laughs> <laughs> measurements, and Google still figured out what I meant and told me what I needed. It took me ten fucking seconds to do more effort than that fucking author did when it came to the radioactivity of their goddamn SCP. God fuck, God. God, God. So, you know what I would have done to look to figure out how to make something really radioactive? Look up Chernobyl. Nah. Well, yeah. I mean, yeah, like, if you want to look at a single incident, but if you're just wanting to talk about, like, this object has thus and thus large amount of radioactivity, you would basically just need to compare it to other things, decide, okay, how radioactive do I want this thing? Do I want this thing to be, like, like the demon core going, going critical? Do, do I want it to be, like... uh early stage elephant's foot like how radioactive do i want this to be look up the radioactivity of that and then bump it up or down based upon where you want it to be at like that's all you have to do like compared to the entire writing process this is as easy as 
making a period. Yeah. Like, it's it's so simple. All right. Uh, this is this is something I just saw while I was re-looking to see if there's any words that'd be hard to to say. This is the only thing I think I'll have problems saying. <laughs> what the fuck <laughs> is that? Um. <laughs> um. Here, let me let me read it. It is three men. Plan? <laughs> Stream planning. This this word what is. The? Three men. Three <laughs> men. There are three men. I don't even know if that's English. It's definitely not. Probably not. <laughs> if I had to guess... <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was gonna guess Russian or Greek. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. We read it here about Dragon's legacy of just one record. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Let's let's hear let's let's hear about this disappointing dragon whose entire legacy is a single vinyl track. It yeah. might actually be like the name of a band or something instead. All right. Well, in that case, the band is a bad band because their entire legacy is a single vinyl track. That is a valid statement. Yeah. Anyway. SCP's... You expect to compete with the Beatles if you only have one album out? Come on! <laughs> anyway. SCP 1748 is a phenomenon manifesting as a looped audio recording of the Winter Road segment of Georgi Virdov's Snowstorm. So it's okay. So it's not even an album, it's just one song that's looped. Yeah, it's... Yeah, so this is like one of those old timey, uh, like records that would go in a jukebox. That's also, just, just one uh, snake in Russian. Ah, yeah. oh, then it's perfect that you found that out, Jerry. Hey, <laughs> that doesn't mean anything that the snake found to the thing snake. No, no, what I'm saying is that you have an abnormal amount of expertise in the area compared to the rest of us. Well, who's that you? <laughs> anyway. Also, my snake cat is being very sweet and cute. Nice. Anyway. The locus uh, for this manifestation is always a device designed for containing audio recordings, including vinyl records, audio cassettes, and compact discs, through radios, MP3 players, USB drives, computers, and game consoles do not appear to be viable objects. Whether or not said object is currently containing an audio recordings of any kind is irrelevant. It is unclear what mechanism produces sound from this object. This locus is hereafter referred to as SCP-1748-1. SCP-1748 reduces the intensity when exposed to a sufficiently sized audience. And increases intensity when too few individuals are present. What determines the number of required individuals is entirely unclear, though this number increases exponentially as the intensity of SP-1748 increases. increases. Based on previously recorded data, it is believed that the intensity of redacted decibels will exceed the current estimated populace of Earth, at which point halting the growth would be impossible. At this time of, at the so, time of this, yeah. So they redacted it, so no one would like try to get to that decibel. Yeah. Or. Oh wait! I just touched it with the with the footnotes, with the footnotes thing, and it also says, Russian, uh, zame, which means snake or dragon. Looking it up on uh, on translation, all it said was snake, so... I could have used the footnotes the entire time. Dumbass. Oh, oh, literally, I, I'm pretty positive it just means snake, unless you use it in a specific way. Right, which is probably why it's called Dragon's Legacy. Legacy. Right. 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 Yeah. Right. Real talk. Real talk, friend. Check the footnotes. Yeah. 
<laughs> Check the footnotes. Yeah, I'll do that every time there's like a number next to a word. I'll look at the footnotes. <laughs> that should be your first indication to go look at the footnotes. <laughs> mm -hmm. Anyway. At the time of this writing, SCP-1748 uh, fluctuates in intensity between redacted decibels and redacted decibels. <laughs> it's happening again, Hatchet. <laughs> <sighs> it literally could have yeah like what's like okay you want to you want to avoid telling people how many decibels causes this bad thing to happen i can respect that that makes sense why are we why are we why are we fucking redacting the decibels that it's currently at assuming that it is not currently at the catastrophic decibels why are we why are we doing that? Why are we being lazy with our writing? <laughs> because it's easier to be lazy, I think. Well, you know, it's also easier to just sign the fuck off and not write a story in the first place. <laughs> anyway. That's valid. Anyway. Uh SCB-1748-1 appears to be immune to damage from sonic vibrations produced by SCP-1748, should SCP-1748-1 be destroyed, SCP-1748 will transfer to the near suitable object. No maximum range for its occurrence has yet been discovered. SCP oh, so it, oh. it's a transferable one. Yeah. Holy shit, that's you, scary. This dragon's legacy that's is getting why it's here. a bit more interesting. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Hatchet, mm -hmm. you're not going to like this paragraph. Oh, is it just oh, a black bar? Is the whole paragraph a black bar? Because at this point, that's what I'm expecting. <laughs> a mixture of black bars and dead egg sponge. <laughs> anyway, uh, all right, time to write the second paragraph of my <laughs> of, of of my SCP. This is gonna this is gonna be a world renowned SCP. Everyone's gonna love my SCP. Okay, paragraph two. On the date of data expunged, redacted data expunged. <laughs> redacted data expunged over and over for 12 paragraphs. Submits it. It gets rejected. I get dejected. I run away. The world is made better by my running away. <laughs> Shut up. Anyway. Anyway. All right. SCP. I'm having a lot of fun with this. Yeah. <laughs> SCP-1748 was initially discovered in Redacted, Russia. The Aaron Morgan Orchestra was hired by Redacted, a wealthy industrialist linked to the activities of Zeme, an occultist organization believed to be responsible for Redacted deaths in Eastern Russia. AMO was Why did they redact the deaths? What the f- Why would you read that? Well, that makes a bit more sense. It's a location, so you, you want to avoid letting people know exactly where it first started. Like, that kind of makes sense. No, they, they, they said... Yeah. They yeah. said Russia. Then they well, were said... to the death. No, wait, Bright, read it back. SCP-1748 was initially discovered in redacted Russia. The... Aaron Morgan Orchestra was hired by Redacted, a wealthy industrialist linked to the activities of Zeme, an occultist organization believed to be responsible for Redacted deaths in Eastern Russia. See? Okay, yeah, no, that is unnecessary. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Why are we covering up how many people died? That's, not That's kind it. of unnecessary. All right, here, here, let's keep going. Maybe they're too lazy to pick a number. Sorry. <laughs> they're scared of numbers. That is my conclusion. Oh, no! Anyway. AMO was commissioned to perform Winter Road on Redacted at Redacted's private ex estate. According, according to eyewitness testimony from a detained Zeme member, at the conclusion of the performance, Redacted, his servants, several other Zeme members, and several individuals from a group the witness could not identify gave AMO a standing ovation during this 
a number of Same members proceeded to enter the stage from near from the rear and murdered the musicians. In the aftermath, the performers were data expunged, were used to construct several crude designs in at least one ident unidentified language on data expunged, prior to the vinyl disc used for recording being saturated inside said mass, which did not damage the object for an as of yet unverified reason. I feel like that entire... I feel like that entire statement just leaked out of my brain because I was too fixated on all the data data expunged. <laughs> the amount of redacteds has made it so that data is being expunged from my brain. Patrick. Is this a is this a serious mental condition? Probably. <laughs> should I Patrick. should I talk about this with my therapist tomorrow? Probably. Patrick. Yes. You needed that expunged. <laughs> I kind of needed. No, what I needed was that. That was good. <laughs> that was a good joke. Yeah. I, it's such that a, was a good, good joke. joke because it's like, it's so simple and dumb, but it's great. Because, <laughs> like, my brain's not expecting you to say that with, like, so much sincerity in your voice. <laughs> It's, it's it's comparable to like you know bright you know like I I've been meaning to say tell this to you for a while like you're one of the best data expunged I've ever data expunged. <laughs> uh, hey hatchet, I hate to tell you this, but this isn't the last of redacting. Of course, oh, of no. course it isn't. Of course it isn't. We couldn't get enough data expunged. I love having data taken out of my brain so that I can no longer properly function. All I really need is that it keeps my Mortal Kombat combos in there and I'll be satisfied. <laughs> anyway, continuing on with the SCP. Give, give me a second. I okay. got it. Well, actually, you can go ahead. All right. After the disc was removed from the, from the mass... And some a member delivered it to Redacted, who then gave some f form of hand gesture. Did they just flip them off? <laughs> you know what? <laughs> very good. Very, very good. Uh, Probably not nice for me to clap, but I'm not yeah. taking it back. Yeah. Several individuals entered the concert hall and murdered the Same members with automatic rifles. The eyewitnesses fled the chamber during this incident and was picked up 15 days later by Foundation Asset and redacted. Thanks to the intelligence provided by said member, a Foundation raid by Mobile Task Force uh, NU-15, also known as White Wolves, on Redacted's estate was organized on Redacted. Redacted was killed during the incident and the disc was recovered. A serv servant previously accounted for then fired upon NTF in 15, in injuring one member and destroying SCP 1548 1. The servant was killed in the fight. SCP 1748 immediately transferred to another vinyl disc containing Chekhovsky's. 1812 Overture, which was recovered, a later addressed to Redacted, and dated five days previously, was also retrieved. Um, excuse me, it's pronounced what? Tchaikovsky's. Tchaikovsky's. Okay. It's Tchaikovsky. Tchaikovsky. Oh, Tchaikovsky. Tchaikovsky. Okay. Great, I tried to do my Karen impression, and I fucked up. God damn it. Actually, it the kind Karen of... fucked up. It kind of fits, because Karen... <laughs> Karen's... I'm gonna stop. Um, actually... Also, everyone, I'd like to a aim your attention at my new name. The Data oh, well, my, my name is The Data Expunged. <laughs> oh my god. Hello. Also known as okay. the Hatchet. This is... The this what? Is, if I also ever have known to... Also known as the what? Sassy Hatchet. Sassy Hatchet. Sassy I'm gonna. Hatchet. Okay. Now oh, I, I want like a name tag. Now I want. <laughs> now I want a name tag that says 
hi, my name is Data Expunged. And then for pronouns, it's just Redact. <laughs> As you can see, I've done nothing. Oh my god. <laughs> no, Bright, you have to put it in the brackets and you have to say THE Redacted. Okay. <laughs> Okay. You know, I have something better than this. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to be a little shit and do something. Oh, oh no. no. Okay. This is a this is a miracle. <laughs> I've never heard Jerry ever doing something like this. <laughs> you don't even know what Jerry's okay. doing. <laughs> so, uh, the interesting thing about that last pair, that last thing you read. Right? Yeah. How they were specific about what guns they used to kill them. Oh, yeah. Like semi specific. <laughs> um, like specific on the like type of guns, but like automatic what wi wi rifles. <laughs> it's like, what? <laughs> so, we can so you're going to redact everything, but you're going to. Like, yeah, we can remember. We can remember to let everyone know. That they were using some kind of automatic rifle, but we can't let them know how many people the cult killed. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I think that was like by the SCP Foundation to kill them or something. No, I thought it I was the know. cult. I thought it was the cult in Russia. That oh, did that. I see what Jerry's doing. They're creating a role. <laughs> um, hey, you were supposed to look. You fucking shit. <laughs> I I got notifications, so I decided to clear them, and then I saw that. Wait, wait. There's a new role. The role. I don't know. I, I'm I, making I'm not, it. I'm I didn't. Making I didn't, okay. I didn't it. look at the name. I didn't look at the name. Okay, all I, I guess you'll. Was new role. I guess you can just reveal it to us when when you are ready. Let's just. Yeah. Let's, let's continue with this. Let's hear. Let's see what the runner is about. And Hatchet, you're gonna love the information it gives. Two redacted. <laughs> Working with those oh troglodytes was certainly distasteful, but the result was most satisfying and invigorating. Be proud of the momental peace you have created. Its power and majesty knows only how to grow within the dust is the subline itself. We hope this letter finds you well and that you feel that power and majesty occupy your entire being. We hope you are also looking forward to phase two. Redacted. Oh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this, this has to be want... more redacted than the, the virus. Hey, uh, yeah, and the virus and... Or do you mean like six ten? No, wait. I was talking about the. Was it? Wait, what was the SCP that had redacted a lot? I don't know. I know it was like it was one the one that you guys were like making fun of. Oh, the radioactive one. Yeah, it had more <sighs> redacted than that one. Oh yeah, it absolutely had way more redacted than that one. <laughs> this is like like that one. I'm, I was. I'm even more pissed because like. Oh well, yeah, like because that. this had to do with some things that like go into my degree. Yeah, yeah, like, like the first one was frustrating because the redacted seemed to exist just to avoid a tense, like a a at most ten minute bit of research on Google. This one's annoying with its with its redacted. Because they just keep using them over and over and over again. So much redaction. Why yes. does like why does this have this much redaction when like comparably to most other SCPs, like we know like uh, this is also here's the thing. Why because... do I feel why okay? Oh. Why do I feel like they chose to okay. Um you know the like, the like letter part. Why do I feel like that was what they started with? Then they did the rest of the sh the shit. Mm. 
I honestly, I don't. Yeah. Anyway, I don't know. There's actually one thing I want to say. Uh, apparently, the contingency plans, you know, like to stop the SCP, contains okay. a lot of important information that was that could have been put into description. Oh dear God. All right, because you see Apollo-A, the sound of SP-1748 shall be broadcast to all available Foundation site areas and sectors where, where hence said broadcast does not disrupt existing containment procedures or other objects. Should contingency Apollo-A be unsuccessful, contingency Apollo-B must be enacted. Uh, Apollo-B. Subject SP-1748-1 is to be electromagnetically suspended in a gears perfect vacuum chamber where it shall be contained indefinitely 10 additional objects capable of serving as scv 1748-1 shall be contained in an identical manner in facilities adjacent to the main chamber absolutely no other items capable of becoming scv 1748-1 shall be allowed within one kilometer of, of the containment chamber it should be noted that while scv 1748 cannot propagate through a perfect vacuum, previous observations have confirmed that it is still produced and continues to grow in intensity without an audience. Given the implications of this evidence, contingency Apollo-B must be considered at a last resort, as any containment failure following its implementation, no matter how slight or brief, is likely to result in an XK class end of the world scenario. That at least told us it was dangerous. <laughs> uh, oh. My internet you left me for a second. Uh, uh, okay. What the fuck did I miss? Uh, I'll reconsider C B, Apollo B, because it has more information than A. All right, I'll reread it. SCP. Like it's the vacuum. Oh yeah, the vacuum. Uh, SCP-1748-1 is to be electromagnetically suspended in a gears perfect vacuum chamber where it shall be contained indefinitely. Ten additional yeah, objects... I, oh. I heard all that. Did you hear it should be noted I, that? That, uh, it, con it continues to increase in intensity? Okay, uh... Did you hear... Uh, uh, getting uh, what uh, what they classified its danger. Oh no, I didn't. Okay, so after the intensity with our audience, given the implication of this evidence, contingency Polo Dash B must be considered a last resort, as any containment failure following its implementation, no matter how slight or brief, is likely to result in an XK class end of the world scenario. So the contingency plans actually say that how dangerous it is. What well, a description! <laughs> Just full of redacted and expunged. Uh, <laughs> yay. Well, we know where it goes. Well, that's if they absolutely had to do that, and it seems unlikely that they have to do that. All right. But we know it's like it, it can right. get that dangerous. Yeah, it can't get that dangerous if they just somehow run out of a decent amount of people to put the thing next to. Yeah. I'm killing my mentor. He's dead. I blasted a hole through his face. Notice how I didn't redact any of the important information in that paragraph? God damn it. My headphones get back in the computer. Bright has been redacted. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah. So where are we, where are we gonna put this shit? Like, the, the, the redacted album. Uh, <laughs> I, ge I guess slap it in XK, cause, cause, like, like, it can potentially cause that, but it's if they're, like, have, have, Real bad issues, but it's just this is, uh, this is a shitty dragon's legacy, though. <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah, <laughs> I didn't expect that much redacted. Though, Hatchet, uh, I feel like he, I, I haven't read it yet, 
but I feel like you might like the next SCP based off its nickname. All right. Jurassic Park. Oh yeah, I think I know this one. Hell yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, the picture it Google gave me was this. When I looked up the SCP. <laughs> Location, Colorado, USA. I live in Colorado. Why are the loca locations Montana? Okay, Montana, Colorado, still in the U.S. The fucking, where the fuck did Germany come from? <laughs> Other side of the goddamn planet. <laughs> All affected motorcycles lured into a local junkyard. <laughs> That's kind of great. Hey, Hatchet, you know what's even better? You know what's even better with this, Hatchet? What? Uh, the MTF task force that gets uh, designated to deal with this SAP is known as MU-13, a.k.a. Ghostbusters. Hi, <laughs> <I'm> Ghostbusters! <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's... Ghostbusters are deal with dinosaurs, but okay. <laughs> Wait. Okay. What? Or maybe dinosaurs. I have no idea. I haven't read the SCP. It's called Jurassic Park, so let's assume that there will be dinosaurs. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. On with the SCP. SCP-1750 refers to this, the spontaneous animation of petroleum-powered vehicles ranging from automobiles to propeller aircraft. Vehicles animated by SCP-1750 display animal-like behaviors with some similarities to crocodiles and birds. Wait, it's just it's just cars acting like dinosaurs. It's, oh my god! <laughs> it's taking over the fossil fuels and making them be like dinosaurs! Oh my god! I think Cash oh. has found his new favorite SCP. It's making it's gonna turn your motorcycle into a raptor. <laughs> <laughs> this is already amazing. Let's continue. I want to hear more about this. Mm -hmm. All right. There, there does not seem to be any underlying pattern or cause behind the phenomenon. Exorcisms ah! t tailored for reptilian <laughs> ectomorphs have. <laughs> have proven the most effective at neutralizing SCP-1750 manifestations, which also end naturally once the vehicle runs out of fuel. Bookworm in chat. Maybe we shouldn't have used dead dinos to fuel automobiles, lol. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I just want to imagine, like, a priest uh, is being dragged, like, okay, so what am I exercising? And they just pull a motorcycle in front of them. <laughs> So that's why it's called Ghostbusters. Yeah. Wait, so the dinosaurs. <laughs> oh my god, the dinosaurs are demons. They have to be exercised. <laughs> god, they're demon dinosaurs taking over fossil fuel vehicles. Mortuary assist uh, Assistant 2. <laughs> All right, which motorcycle has the demon in it? <laughs> which one's going in the trash compactor? <laughs> this is why I love the SCP universe. Yeah. Because sometimes you've got extremely fucked up, sad, and terrible things, that other times you have, you have cars becoming demon dinosaurs. Cars possessed by dead dinosaurs who could ask for more. This is this is great. Yeah. This is like if this isn't like a serious issue, it's an instant spood tier. And I yeah. doubt that it's a serious issue. Like, what the fuck are dinosaur cars gonna do? <laughs> yeah. All right. Given this information, it is hypo 
hypothesized that SCP-1750 is the result of dinosaur-based ectomorphs inhabiting the fuel on, fuel in the vehicles. This would similarly explain why SCP-1750 has not occurred in in mobile gasoline-powered machines. They may in fact occur, but there would be no way for them to actually move upon manifesting. Addendum. Noted SCP-1750 Manifestations Montana, USA Event A motorcycle rally goes awry when or Ari sorry, I had to when the vehicles are affected by SCP-1750 dislodging their riders and then attempting to maul them using their tires and expose pipe, tailpipes injured and wounded riders and Tended to draw more attention from affected motorcycles. Containment. All affected motorcycles lured in, into a local junkyard by use of domestic, domestic chickens where they are fenced in and exercised. All riding injuries blamed on improper vehicle handling. Class A and Wait, so they're exercising the possessed cars? How did they rope the priests into that? They must have like SCP exorcists. Yeah. That, that's fair. I mean, how do you go to a local priest and go, oh, by the way, this car is possessed by a dinosaur. Please exercise it. Hey, bitch. <laughs> there's a fucking... There, bitch, my car. It's turned into a raptor. Hell, why is there a Utah raptor in my Harley? <laughs> oh, no. Please get the ancient dinosaur. Please. Please get the relative to birds out of my car, please. <laughs> oh, no, what if, oh, no. What if this happened to a monster truck? You have like a T-Rex running grave digger. <laughs> oh, that's great. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Eat their passengers, this bookworm. Derive sustenance from all the dumb fucks who go to a motorcycle rally. Yeah. Anyway, Class A amnestics dispersal ordered. All right, here we go, Hatchet. Colorado, USA. Event. What happened in my state? An 18-wheel semi-truck becomes affected by SCP-1750 while refueling. It proceeds to rampage through the city, sneaking up on smaller vehicles, such as sedans and... Is it coops or cups or... And Did ramming into them to knock them over. <laughs> Containment. Because the vehicle had not refueled fuel, it, it, it exercised itself after two hours. The vehicle was destroyed and the event blamed on a dr drunk driver. Class C and that's excused. This is... This is my new favorite SCP, hands yeah. down. But okay, what happened, happened in Germany? Bookworm says that that's just a bad case of road rage, lol. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was, <laughs> you see my, you see the semi truck. <laughs> you know, it started acting like a goddamn fucking car car dontosaurus. Yeah, it's just a bad case of road rage. The driver was like really fucking angry for some reason. Yeah, that's why. <laughs> That's that's why the truck started hunting sedans. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. All right. Bavaria, Germany. Event. A crop dusting plane is affected by SCP-1750 mid-flight, veering off course and flying to the Wurtach Wur River where it lands and attempts to dig up the ground near the river by spinning its wheels along the ground. Containment. Plane ran out of fuel and exercise itself. Pilot and bystanders given Class C amnestics. Excavation of the soil revealed a small clutch of fossilized eggs, hypothesized to belong to Pterodactylus antiquus. Yeah, I was gonna say this is, this is uh. Oh, why am I forgetting that clade of of pterosaurs now? Um, yeah, this is Archosaur. Is that it? Archosaur? I need to look. What? Let me get a second. You can continue. 
Got it. All right. Uh, Darkon Mongolia. Event. A jeep and microcar are simultaneously affected by SCP-1750. While the jeep wanders the city, occasionally running over foliage and ramming into trees, the microcar attacks nearby civilians. The jeep eventually comes across the microcar, which is which accelerates into and ramps it. The two vehicles proceed to engage in combat until a sudden sandstorm blows into the city and buries both vehicles. Containment. All affected civilians given Class A amnestics, destruction caused by the vehicles blamed on the sandstorm. Wait, how does that make sense? <laughs> Damage caused by a car totally was caused by a sandstorm. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that's good. Good job. Good job there. You know what? Um, that's still better than putting redacted. <laughs> there. <laughs> they just redact the people to get them to forget. Yeah. Oh yeah. I just see Borkman's message now. It says, "Oh, I just wanted to see its eggs again." Yeah. 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 Poor, poor baby. Poor baby. All right. Gulf of Mexico. Event. A crude oil tanker is affected by SCP-1750 and proceeds to submerge itself with the loss of almost all hands on deck. Following its submersion, the tanker has been observed intermediately throughout the Atlantic Ocean, attacking small yachts and baleen whales and behaving in a manner similar to a great white shark. It did it's a megalodon? a megalodon sub. Yep. They've oh. got a megalodon sub. <laughs> Either that or a mosasaur, but that's sounding like megalodon. Sounds yeah. like megalodon because they literally acted like great white sharks, only they were bigger. Yeah. But I get well, I guess my hesitancy there is that megalodons probably didn't act much like great whites today. But yeah. Well, from what they've uh, researched and found, they're uh, so they look so alike, even though they're totally unrelated. Simply because they both had the same sort of like they both acted the same, hunted the same sort of things. Well, they didn't really look alike. They didn't really? look that much alike. Yeah, like they would have had completely different patterning. They would have been much stockier. Like <laughs> the research I've seen, like directly goes against that. Yeah. All right, now let's see how what how they contained it. The surviving crew members were given Class C anesthetics. The, the affected tanker is still at large. In addition to ongoing containment duties, the Foundation Atlantic Fleet has been ordered to keep watch for and neutralize the ship if it is spotted. The environmental damage estimated to result upon its destruction has been deemed within acceptable parameters by the Ethics Committee. Wait, why, why don't they just let it... Well, oh, yeah, it's hunting other ships, but... Hmm. Alright, so Hatchet, since this is your favorite, I'm going to send you the link to it. Yeah, give me that link and let me... How the fuck do I pronounce this? I know I've, pr I know I've heard this word before. Pronunciation. Yeah, apparently under it, though, it has a... It leads you to the author of the SCP. Hmm. So yeah, this is so Hatchet, this is one of your new favorites. One one second. One second. Edge Darkids. There we go. Edge Darkids. That's that's some Edge Darkid pterosaur behavior. That's the that's the family I was thinking of. Got it. They're like they're they're the they're the big scavenger pterosaurs, like Quetzalcoatl. Ah, uh, hmm. not the god gets of the dinosaur, right? No, Bright. I just randomly started talking about a South American, or not South American, a Central American god. Yes, I'm talking. <laughs> Wait, did you just call it a dinosaur? Maybe. They're not dinosaurs. They're pterosaurs. God damn it. <laughs> they diverged from dinosaurs when we did. Uh. 
They yeah. are as related to dinosaurs as we are. So yeah, uh, Hatchet, this is one of your new favorites now, huh? Yes, this is absolutely easily my new favorite SCP. It's just <laughs> dinosaur ghosts taking over cars yeah, and, and planes and shit with their their dead bone juices. Yeah, and apparently with the SCP, you also get a link to the author. Yeah, this is... I love this. <laughs> words, words cannot fully describe how much I love this. This is one thing that I, I like doing this, because uh, we all get to learn new SCPs and get new favorite SCPs. Yeah, I would have never heard <laughs> about this SCP without this. I love these streams so much. Yeah. <laughs> like, <I'm> gonna... <laughs> and, and, the, and the naming choice of Jurassic Park is such a good bait and switch, because you're thinking, okay, it's going to be living dinosaurs. No. Nope. You know it's what? Not I that. still think the song fits. No, 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 no. Here's here's the real here's the real take. You have to play that song and it's in nothing but car horns. Oh no. We will have a chorus of ghost dino cars singing oh, the Jurassic God. Park theme before they inevitably die because they run out of their dead bone juice. Wait, let me let me see. Let me see if there's... Okay. Hatch, I might send you something. Oh, no. Did someone actually do that? I'm gonna, ch I'm gonna check. It, it does sound like something that would exist. But either way, I don't think I'm going to get any pushback on this. Spood deer. Easy spood deer. Spood <laughs> deer. If if I had if I had the power within my grasp, I would add a spood plus plus tier. <laughs> for is... this, specifically for this SCP. I'll admit that's one of the best SCPs I've ever heard. This just like I had a giant shit eating grin on my face the entirety of you reading this. I'm doing nothing. Aww. Snake cat. What are you doing? I do know how to make it myself. Oh. Actually. Wait. But I don't have Where the, like... I, I saved I it. I don't have the thing where... Hold on, I'm probably have to refresh. Hold on, let's refresh. Where the fuck did it go? Are you trying to add a spood plus plus tier? No, I didn't do that. Yeah, it's right there. It's right there. I can't even read it. Where'd it go? It's like gone. Um, I haven't found one with... Okay. Hash. Are you at like a max number of tiers? Probably. I tried adding another one called Dino Tier. <laughs> but I guess I can't add any more. I will say this is top tier spood tier. This is the ep epitome of what one would expect spood tier. Yeah, you gotta put this at the very beginning of spood tier. That I can actually do. Dude, that is a consolation prize to not having a dino tier. <laughs> Yeah. I'm I don't think I'm ever going to get the image of an 18 wielder hunting sedans out of my head. <laughs> also, um I'm going to have to spoil the next image and you'll understand when you see it. Okay. But Darna, what were you trying to say? So, oh. Oh no. There's a rubber chicken cover. Oh, God. That sounds like one of the most insufferable things anyone could do. Wait. Rubber chicken cover? What? A rubber oh, chicken cover. Jurassic co Park. Oh, yeah. I'm going to listen to it, and I'll tell you 
afterwards. Oh, I've okay. heard that. I, I love it. Oh, God. Of course you would love it, fucking <laughs> bird-ass chicken lady. <laughs> Fuck you. Anyway, uh, did you guys see the picture? Yes, is that a dead cow in a rodeo? <laughs> it sounds like... Sounds like someone's dying. <laughs> That's what it. Oh, God. Okay, you know what? Would that be copyrighted? Can we just play this on stream? <laughs> Probably. Be copyrighted. Yeah. Yeah, yeah at least the cover hey, would be. Hmm? Hatch. Hatch. Yeah. Look in stream planning. Air horn remix. I think the only way I could play that on stream is if I have a parody of citation license, if you know what that is. Yeah. But I do not have one of those. And I'm pretty sure those cost money. <laughs> This... <laughs> Isn't it amazing? Oh wait, that's not the one I heard. Oh yeah, there were mo there were multiple. I I like I I don't think there is a more immaculate way to butcher a score from John Williams. It's just awful. My head hurts. I had a headache before we did the dino one. The dino one cured me of my headache. And now it's... Anyway, the, the next SCP that deals with the cow... You're welcome. That deals with the cow, its nickname is Event Perception. Okay. Uh-oh. Okay. First thing I see when opening it. Informational cognito hazard warning. The following documentation is directly affected by the anomalous linguistic info hazard. Procedure uh, Tomaic trepidation is now in effect. All unorthanized personnel will be terminated upon discovery. Authorized oh, we're screwed. Uh, yeah. Authorized personnel be advised that you have administered the Class 7 counter memetic safety mechanism co Codename Ninth Sphere. This allows for viewing of SCP-1751 without prior knowledge of the Latin language. Please do not re-administer this mechanism without on-site medical approval and never more than twice within a one-hour period. Okay, so this is an anti-meme. Or maybe, or, or has antimimetic powers. Mm -hmm. Well, that's... Antimimetic abilities. Yeah. Well, let's mm. find out. Uh, it somehow this has is... to deal with cows. Yeah, the image that you sent is just a picture of a dead cow at a rodeo. I don't see the relevance. <laughs> I don't see the relevance either. We'll find out. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I need to take a moment mm -hmm. to just once again express my utter disdain at what you have exposed me to, Adorna. <laughs> I've stopped You're listening welcome. to it. I've stopped listening to it. But I've it's it's now set up shop in my brain and I hate it so much. I want to evict this, but it's 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 just it's not going. I can't evict it. You're welcome. I'm, I'm stuck with it. You're welcome. It, this has forever tainted my first experience of of the dino cars. Uh, hey, at least I didn't send you the chicken one. Oh god. Oh dear god. Hey Hatchet, oh, I'm gonna post oh. in there a an, a better I'm, one. I'm no bright. Oh no! If you, it's a kazoo version. Uh, a kazoo? Oh no! Uh, I don't even remember what a kazoo I is. <laughs> I know what it is. I want to. I, I want to hear it. it. Let's I, I want to hear it. I want to hear it. I can't listen to it though. 
I think I've heard the kazoo one before. If it's the one I'm thinking of, it, I like it. <laughs> I'll assume that's, yes, it's the one I'm thinking of. It's my it's favorite not, version. It's not, it's not even in sync with the background music. <laughs> it's my favorite version, despite the original. Like, I, I like the original better, but this is my favorite parody version. It's so good! This is the perfect... <laughs> Just the fact that it's coming alongside the visuals of the actual Jurassic Park, and you can hear the actual theme in the background overlapping this terrible remake. <laughs> also, why is why why is why is this person's uh profile picture look like a black bear wearing a Batman outfit? Am I high? Maybe. No. So did, did you like that? Did, did the shroom act here in Colorado passing do what all the all the conservatives apparently think and make it so that the government was putting psychedelics in my water? Is that what's going on? Did you like the song hatchet? Yes, it is amazing. <laughs> it doesn't I'm quite... sorry, Hatchet, you were not drugged by mushroom water. <laughs> Are, but how do you know I wasn't? That's the question. Because I know you weren't. I, I, but how? How do you know what you know? This is epistemology, bitch. <laughs> because anyway, I know. Um, that's after, not a. That's not an acceptable oh, answer. How do you acquire that knowledge? Anyway, after. Because there hey, Hatch. No... Oh. What? Hatch. Yes. I don't I don't know if this will fix anything or make it worse, but here. Okay. I'm losing. <laughs> <laughs> All I see is cats poorly photoshopped into the scenery. <laughs> Jurassic Park, but with cats. Let's watch this. Uh, while you're watching it, I guess I'll read the SCP. Yeah. All right. <laughs> oh. <laughs> anyway, uh. it's it's just giant fucking cats. Yeah. <laughs> why is I why is the black one just sitting in the lake? <laughs> Oh god! Oh god! Oh god! <laughs> the turn off! The video jump scared me! How could you do this? I, I took a second. I, I, I take a second to, to pause the video when the black cat's in the water. And then when I unpause it, it shows the black cat meowing and opening its mouth, but they did the T-Rex roll. <laughs> and it scared the shit out of me. Yeah. Anyway, on with the SCP. Oh, God. Uh, you good? My, my brain, it's, it's gone. My brain is redacted. <laughs> it is dead expunged. All right. Anyway, on with the SCP. SCP-1751 is a fixed point in space-time, information about which can only be per perceived in Latin. Oh, fuck. You know, what did the like, Catholics do? SCP. What did the Catholics do? <laughs> SCP-1751 as it is currently understood, appears to produce this effect through a proto-memetic infohazard mechanism. Cur current ongoing research has proposed that the effectiveness of a counter-meme would suggest a non-memetic source of SCP-1751's anomalous eff effects, though the method through which SCP-1751 manifests is poorly understood. 
pearly understood? Poorly, yeah, poorly. Sound like you said pearly. <laughs> pearly. <laughs> As in pearly whites. <laughs> You're just getting detailed nails, just making them all pearly white. <laughs> Early whites refers to teeth. Well, they can work with fingernails. They're bones, too. No, they're not. Oh, my God, <laughs> Bryce. <laughs> Bryce? The fingernails are keratin. You don't actually think those are bones, right? No. <laughs> my friends want me to suffer. <laughs> That is the conclusion I've come to after a long period of analysis. Uh, anyway. Can we go back to the dino cycles? No. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, specifically SCB-1751 is the entire year of redacted AD, centered around the Mediterranean Sea. During this time, no known major historical events took place though approximately to Nero's per persecution of early Abrahamic sex has has been noted. Abrahamic sex. Yeah, hell yeah. You know what I meant, you son of a bitch. I know. There we <laughs> go. I have finished my the I have finished the new thing. Oh, the roll? Yes. Let's see, what's okay, it so called? What is this role? I'm going to give it to you, Hatchet. <laughs> <We're dead. laughs> yeah. I am redacted. Unless uh, you want it, unless you don't want it. No, this is, this is fitting. Okay, I'm starting to feel like the Google gave me an image that does not fit with the SCP whatsoever. <laughs> uh, All right. But I like how it says no major historical events took place. Then it leads to narrow persecuting Abrahamic people. <laughs> a possible connection, like it said. Uh, oh! I thought when you put an icon to a a, a stat a thing, it would show next to your name. Oh, sad. Okay. Anyway, Foundation historians have put forward the idea that SP seventeen fifty one is somehow related to the the burned redacted, and the aftermath thereof, based on several writings in Foundation custody. Recovered from the remnants of the Library of Alexandria. Was that the one that was burned down by the Romans? No. Oh. Okay. Yeah. It was burned down by a bunch of Christian douchebags. Okay, I thought there was like one church, uh, not church, one library in Greece that was like burned down by Romans. I mean, it might have, I mean, it. I don't remember the actual timeline. It might have been the Roman Catholic Church that did it. I remember watching a movie about it. Yeah, I, I there's still there's feel a whole like last there's a whole last Catholic saint that is the guy who burned down the the library of Alexandria. I wish they hadn't, because that, that I think I believe that library contained a lot of useful knowledge. Yeah, it's a, it's almost as if a uh, historically Christian uh historically per <laughs> everything is broken. Historical Christian persecution and erasure of other cultures has led to massive gaps of knowledge that we can never get back because of their 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 hatred of other perspectives. I have absolutely no familiarity with this idea at all, being a Norse pagan. Yeah. I I wonder if like some of the things like Damascus steel, Greek fire. I wonder if, like, the ingredients on how to make it fit were in that library. Because we don't know how to make that shit. Well, I mean, nowadays we can make Damascus steel. Right, but we don't know how to make Greek fire or, or the other weird yeah. things we find. Yeah, in other words, there's a whole ass massive amount of lost information 
because a bunch of Christians didn't like them, they're pagans. Uh-huh. Yeah. Once again, I have no familiarity with this idea. I I haven't. I I, I definitely. Oh yeah, true yeah, bookworm. Yeah, bookworm. Not to mention just historical records, like. Uh. Great. Now I'm now I'm depressed thinking about that. Yeah. Anyway, I'm this sorry. this stream this stream has been such a whirlwind. <laughs> yeah, it has. <laughs> like to put into perspective, like I I might be preaching a choir. I don't know how many of you know this, but with reconstructionism oh. surrounding Norse paganism, like some of the best sources we have to reconstructing Nordic traditions is laws that were outlawing those traditions. Oh no. Yeah, oh, look for read the also. also other yeah. ones that are really good sources are the people that were trying to erase it or Christianify it. So there are modifications made that we know are very likely made specifically to try to Christianize those in that faith. Yeah, or it, it's commonly a mixture of that and just Christianization having an overall cultural diffusion into the culture like for instance there's a lot of those trends that also exist in the poetic edda which is pretty much the only norse source we have that was almost certainly written by a pagan and even then there's still a lot of those things that seem eerily connected to christianity and it came maybe a hundred years after christianization began so it was easily long enough for those ideas to just start diffusing and merging with uh norse culture which to be fair there's no actual issue with like in concept there's no actual issue with christian christo paganism it's just the fact that that being diffused and then immediately supplanting it makes it hard to determine what was originally there and what was a christian reinterpretation of what was originally there Mm -hmm. yeah Oh, yeah. All right. We're ready to go back to the SCP. Also, Bookworm said they read ahead and they said that you'll get more depressed at you. Yay. Yeah. Although, think... to be, f- although, like, like with all things, there is a silver lining. Okay. There is a silver lining. And that is that in the creation of the, of some sagas that were explicitly designed to mock pagans, we got the creation of. The saga that talks about the Volsi. If any of you don't know what that is, Ocean Keltoy made a wonderful video about it. It's literally a fermented horse penis that a bunch of people developed a weird cult around. And it's one of the best... (laughs) Bookworm, all hail the Volsi. It's one of the best stories I've ever heard in my life. Yeah. All right. Anyway, I'm going to have to go eat dinner. But this has been fun. I'm sorry. Do, fine, do you Jerry. think you'll be back at some point? Probably not. Okay. Yeah. Only thing I've had to eat today is honestly breakfast. I I spent the Jesus. rest of my energy on making the redacted roll and trying to <laughs> and being pissed at the redacted icon not working. So trying to oh. add so trying to make it an emoji for the server. Uh, a, a, a noble cause. We must all salute the sacrifice of Adurna's spoons in the creation of, of this role. What? <laughs> what? How is Adurna's spoons related no, to No, not inter- Adurna. Fuck! God damn it. Rattlers. God fucking... <laughs> you people have mashed my brains today. <laughs> I mess- well, I, I have rattlers. put something uh that I think you and I'm hmm. gonna link you and write to it and dumb post. And bookworm says, uh, salutes the tired snack, or no, salutes the exhausted snack. Thank you for your service. Says How bookworm. fun. Uh, damn it. Like, seriously. 
<laughs> and dumb pose. <laughs> uh yeah, this this stream is like a roller coaster. We have the we have the redacted's breaking my brain. Then we have extremely giddy fun times with dino cars. And then we have my brain being melted with air foam Jurassic Park remixes and a T-Rex cat yelling at me. And then now I'm thinking about all that we've lost to history. You can go ahead, Brains. Uh, give me one second. All right. An analysis of, of the Dead Sea Scrolls. When considered by any sapient language capable organism, their thought process processes invariably translate into Latin whenever SP seventeen fifty one is directly thought about. This presents in the same manner as non anomalous multilingual perception. The subject appears to think in Latin whenever directly or indirectly thinking about SCP-1751. Damn. Wish it worked on Bright. <laughs> hey. Oh my god, that would be great. Just okay. immediately give Bright the ability to pronounce and understand Latin. These, these, <laughs> these documents would be so much easier to get through. Shush. Bright, take a course in Latin. Fuck off. <laughs> anyway, the effects of SCP-1751's manipulation of thought processes have included nausea, headache, loss of focus, and difficulty communicating, though the symptoms are considered a, a product of the subject spontaneously experiencing a class sigma shift in perception and not an additional manifestation of SCP-1751. All of those things are just what I deal with on a daily, on, on a daily basis. Did did I did I get affected by this SCP and just didn't get any of the cool bits? Yes. Damn it. Anyway, I I get I guess my perception of Latin was expunged. <laughs> <laughs> uh, prolonged exposure to SCP-1751 has resulted in the degradation of work were Nick were Nick uh. I, I'm I'm terrified to say the word. <laughs> just type just type it and we'll say it. <laughs> Cause I feel like I'm gonna fuck up and say something really bad. <laughs> We're Nikki. Thank you. Yeah, bookworm pro provide how would you even say something really bad there? Uh, you would I have was... to import an R sound. I don't and I a was, G sound. I was close to saying it in a, in a way that would sound like it, but not at the same time. Uh, so I was like, you know what? I'm not saying it. Uh, that's valid, but it's also funny and stupid. <laughs> I know. Uh, anyway. Maybe it's because you're funny and stupid. Let's continue. Yeah. I'm not going to fight that. That's fair. <laughs> area in the cerebral context resulting in a cessation of understanding of all language except for latin and a complete and oh my fucking god <laughs> i'm sorry i'm sorry to interrupt but i i load up minecraft on my xbox i go to the mine store to fucking uh to, to fucking go see if i need to update any of my texture packs and the first thing I fucking see on opening the sidebar is the pop culture section is currently represented by the Jurassic World symbol. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> it's all connected. Mojang knew. You know, it'd be kind of cool if, they... if someone made a, a mod or something in like Minecraft Bedrock that was SCP-1750. <laughs> no, you see, here's here's the real question. If Mojang, as a collective entity, already knew everything that's going to happen, how much worse 
does that make the villager design? Oh no. <laughs> anyway, uh, and a complete inability to understand language in a, in the long term. In extreme cases, tumor growth has been observed in patients with extended exposure to SCP-1751. It is theorized that SCP-1751 rapidly deconstructs and then rebuilds neuron connections within the language centers of the human brain. Additionally, subjects who have pre-existing knowledge of the Latin language have suffered decreased symptoms in relation to their level of fluency. Due to the fact that SP-1751 appears to be an infohazard infection of a specific point in space-time, and not simply text or some other human construct, containment of SP-1751 has revolved around a suppression of public knowledge of it. Any sapient organism which considers SP-1751 will experience its anomalous effects regardless of location, intelligence level, and temporal anchor point, or otherwise. As such, all textbooks which include SP-1751 have been confiscated and their subsequent editions edited. Suppression of knowledge regarding SP-1751 and a deliberate disinformation campaign have served to reduce public attention of SCP-1751's specific point in the time to null values. SCP-1751 presents the danger of a GH class, dead greenhouse scenario, where only the most remote media and accessible portions of humanity will survive. Small-scale containment breaches have been occurred in the past through acute carcinogen application and counterintelligence operations. Is this why Latin is a dead language? Sorry, what did you ask? I muted because I switched to uh, my laptop speakers. Uh, I, I said, is this why Latin's a dead language? Mm. No, I don't think that, nah, that doesn't seem connected. Weird. Because like Latin became a dead language simply because it evolved into a like tons of other languages and then ceased being continuously used. Yeah. I, I can also see Jack Bright just constantly learning Latin just to only speak it just to mess with with everyone at the foundation. Oh god. <laughs> I can see that. Fucking Jack Bright. <laughs> Remember, the more you talk about Jack Bright, the more it pisses off Admin Bright. So do it. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Also, uh, Bookworm said, uh, talked about the poem, so I'll read the poem about this SCP. Alright. And the gypsy woman cried to her gods to save her burn skin, oh. her children, bubbling at her feet, but Man hath no eerie like the gods, who took offense with her for weakness, took it as an affront, and in their vanity, their splitting grins, they damned her shame to the ever flows of time, and snatched her dying breath, nailing it to the, well, the maleficent clock, so that all of man might remember, understand, and reveal in her pain. Right. Yeah. You might have just unknowingly said a racial slur. Yeah. Did I? The uh. Yes. Are the starting and the blank woman. Oh shit! I forgot that was. Oh fuck. Yeah, I, I, I decided to double check to see if there was any other notable definition that might be getting used here. A nomadic or free spirited person is the second definition. But okay. 
maybe that's what it's talking but g- given the surrounding cause it's it's yeah. yeah you're fine bookworm yeah so uh that's the scp i'm getting canceled uh. oh god oh god bookworm oh yeah oh no oh no i see that so- <laughs> it's something to do with Roman genocide. Yeah. Oh. Uh, uh, uh. I mean, Bookworm's not wrong. Okay, so. This is, this is a memetic agent that if you learn about this particular event in history, it will eventually make it so that you cannot speak any language other than Latin. Is that what I'm picking up? Yeah. Well, uh, some people have even grown tumors, so... I there, and there's... So... Oh, uh, that's... Yeah, and, and Bogart says and eventually die. And eventually die. So, honestly... Like, I think the worst possible case scenario is an XK. Yeah. But it's also an <sighs> unbelievably unlikely case scenario. Well, it's it... probably, probably like City. Well, well with, the X, with the XK, it said, like, well, with how it just says XK, it says GH class, then dead greenhouse scenario where only the most remote, media, inaccessible portions of humanity will, would survive. Yeah, so, uh, I would say that's not the entire, I would say continent there. Like, it's not, it's not literally everyone, and it's not necessarily what I would put in world changing, because that generally comes with less overall, over-the-top amounts of death. Yeah. But... I just realized this also means that basically the only people that wouldn't die are all the extremely isolated indigenous communities that have been mm-hmm. uh, cordoned off because they're hostile to outsiders, which is fair at this point. Yeah. Also, I had you, uh, I'm... I- I'm about to post the next SCP's picture, and it is the most terrifying thing you'll ever witness. Are you being sarcastic? No, it is extremely terrifying. It's just a fucking plate. Fuck you. Oh my god. (laughs) It's just a plate. Right. Sometimes I look in the mirror and I think, wow. Let's continue with the SCP. Wait, I also love Bookworm's Masters. Also, this SCP means that the Foundation is directly aiding and covering up Roman persecution. Oh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh. Oh, no. I mean, it's not the worst thing, because if you remember, the Foundation nearly wiped out all of Japan because pe- people were using emojis. <laughs> Yeah, it's not the, like, (laughs) as fucked as it is, this is its case where, like, okay, I can understand why this is being suppressed. Like, this is actually a very legitimate threat to literally everyone on Earth that isn't in a super isolated community. But, Mm -hmm. yeesh, them optics, man. I, I, I still love it how if you say uwu or owo and use emojis in the SCP universe, you, you will die. <laughs> the bride would have died like 20 times over. Yeah. Oh, God, Cirrus. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. All the, all the VTubers. <laughs> Gura. Polo Life. They're all gone. <laughs> what will we do oh, without the little shark girl? She would also die. Oh fuck! What would we do without the small mouse rage? 
<laughs> I think you would also die too. Yeah, Bright, you're a walking me. <laughs> well, so she would die, Bright would die. Pretty much everyone who's in, like, our server would die. Yeah. We're all dead, basically. So point being, I... Because we don't, like, have a middle ground between XK and, like, like at the very edge of fucking XK, I'll just say continent. Yeah. Awesome. And also, we can't add any more tiers. Yeah. We'd have to get rid of a previous tier. Yeah. Also, um, this... SCP's nickname is called D-A-R-D Information Restrictions Apply. Okay. <laughs> okay, so this is a Keter, but it's been called something different. It's Threat Classification. Deviant 9. Spatial slash Temporal. Fuck is Deviant Nye? I don't know. I've never seen this before. Is this even like from differently? Is, is this like from someone's failed attempt at creating a secondary, like, danger level classification rather than just using Keter? Probably. However, it does have a high rating of 431. Hmm. So, I... Yeah, for perspective, what was the rating of the really bad redacted one? 59. 59 of, like, 100%? Well, no, that's how many people like it. Oh, 50. Oh. Yeah. Is there, like, a dislike function? Yeah, there's a dislike function. I... I... I don't... You can't really see dislikes. Uh... So either people aren't seeing the redacted one, or people hate the redacted one. Yeah, which it's this SCP is written way differently because instead of like description, containment procedures, and all that shit, it's operational parameter summary, additional information, supplementary information. Yeah, that's odd. Yeah, this is, this is, I don't have to read everything. Because I feel like if I don't, well, we're going to miss things. So, yeah, this is just this... a confusing format. It's out of, yeah. out of, out of, out of the norm. Yeah. Well, let's see if we like it. Also, this one is called SPC. Oh, yeah, it is. It's called SPC 1764. Wait a minute. <laughs> Is this just filled with typos at this point? Maybe. Wait, maybe it's some kind of mimetic agent to where they have to scramble it. Probably. We're about to find out. Alright. The object in question is a small metallic disc, approximately 10 centimeters in diameter and 1 millimeter in thickness. Analysis of the object structure indicates that it, it is constructed of 99% titanium with traces of platinum, iron, and cadmium. Never heard of that metal. Mm -hmm. Both sides have been polished to a high sheen, and the object possesses a 99% reflectance mm -hmm. rating. The object in question is to be maintained in a cryogenic suspension, Within a bath of liquid nitrogen, should the temperature of an object exceed negative 200 degrees standard, uh, auditory and visual alarms will go off to warn all personnel in the area to retreat to a safe distance of no less than 200 standard units with unit uh, units until a specialized on-site response team can be assembled to restore a safe operating 
parameters. Under no circumstances are untrained personnel to enter the operational area without permission of a second circle or higher authority. Further information of the nature of the object is restricted to any personnel who do not yes, yet possess level 9 esoterica training due to, due to information security concerns and is outside the boundaries of a general su supernatural phenomenon case file. Additional information. The object in question appears to be, to be an artifact of the organ organization calling itself the Special Containment Procedures Foundation. Wait a minute. <laughs> that That's SCP Foundation. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> this is getting fucky. Yeah, this is getting fucky. Wait a minute. Yeah, Bookworm says person. it's alternate universes. Yeah, yeah, it's... this is a which would make sense because it's called a a deviant nine spatial slash temporal. Hmm, so that makes sense. So is this an SCP file that just like got imported into the into our SCP? <laughs> yeah. Oh, let's see. Let's see. All right. The mission of this organization appears to be similar to that of the Deviance Artifacts Research Division of the of the Uni Unified Empire. Wait a minute. <laughs> we got an empire going on, huh? <laughs> yeah. We've been talking a lot about John Williams. Is there going to be some Star Wars references in here somewhere? <laughs> We need to get a John Williams track over this one, too. Maybe. All right. One odd phenomenon associated with this object is that the text of the supernatural phenomenon case file associated with the object has altered itself into the form of a special containment procedure file using a different file format than that used by the DARD. The conclusion of the theoretics department is that a localized information anomaly has formed in relation to this object between two parallel membrane universes in a localized space time. In layperson's terms, information pertaining to this object appears to have been reversed between our universe and the alternate universe. Even more unusually, this information leak leakage appears to be limited to the Supernatural phenomenon case file summary only. Some supplementary or force and classified documents associated with the object in question appear unaffected. But any attempts to reformat or edit the case file back to proper DRD format or revert within days into the anomalous SCP format. For this reason, personnel are no longer to waste time and energy repairing an anomalous information discrepancy as the SCP case file includes an addendum explaining the nature of the format discrepancy and the reasons we, why said discrepancy cannot be repaired. The effects on normal operating procedures are deemed minimum at worst. Sublimatory information. The object's alternate case file itself has been has itself been classified as supernatural phenomenon class, classified deviant 10 also known as multi spatial temporal multiversal although abbreviated the format and terminology used provide some interesting insights into the nature of its alternate dimension particularly interesting to DARD researchers is the use of the term special containment procedures itself First of all, the phrase indicates that the primary mission of this alternate realities organization is the containment and safekeeping of supernatural phenomena, rather than research and, and exploitation of such. In addition, the use of the term spe special may indicate that supernatural phenomena are considered a rare event in, in this alternate universe, indicating the, an alternate resolution to the Teller-Einstein event. In addition, this the use of the term key, KTR. Oh, Keter. I get it. 
as an object's classification indicates that the alternate organization feels safe in using a Kabbalistic term of power and a poetic sense as an indication of the object's level of reality alteration, indicating that unified thaumatology is either an unknown phenomenon in the other world or that research into UT is not yet discovered, the Jericho information theory. Further evidence that the alternate universe has not yet discovered or formulated JIT can be found in a casual and cav cavalier way in which the alternate universe's case file refers to the object in question by its case file number indicating that applied nomenclature is not yet well understood field of study in the alternate universe. It has however been theorized that at least some understanding of JIT does exist as the alternate case file contains significant amounts of censorship and redaction of information indicating that at least some rudimentary understanding of information warfare may exist. On a more frightening note, the object's alternate case file concludes with speculation into the nature of our universe by the SCP universe's own mentalist equivalents. This in includes several alarmist speculations as to the nature of the DARD and the Unified Empire itself. It concludes with a dangerous militaristic conclusion that the object in question may represent the first breach between our two universes, which could possibly possibly progress with, from mere information leakage into energetic and physical intrusions. It is the conclusion of the DARD that esoteric warfare specialists prepare emergency response procedures in the case of possible escalation by the alternate universe into our own, including the authorized use of TH-M-L level esoterical a scorched earth policy, ensuring the mutual destruction of our two universes should the intrusion occur. Although the DARD remains loyal to its mission as set forth by the unifier, the chance that possibility alteration esoterica could fall into the hands of such an alarmingly brutal society must not be a continence. This report, uh, this is the note they said earlier. This report was approved and sealed by the senior scribe Oliver on the 29th day of the 10th lunarium and 1,000 thousand and thirteenth year of the unified empire all pra praise be to the unifier and may his wrath strike down upon me and the fruit of my loins for ten thousand generations if i should lay astray a single soul through lies of omission or fact and that's it of the scp okay i i really like this this is interesting so first off this is quite possibly one of the most inventive and interesting SCPs I've ever heard. Yeah. It's literally just a fucking plate that is in a separate universe and has our SCP stuff in it. And then speculation from the the group on the other side, as well as reacting to our dumb monkey brains instinct of wanting to immediately kill things. Yeah. They think we're the GOC. Oh, God. So, for, for starters, honestly, this is so refreshing after all of those lazy-ass redacted oh. ones earlier. Um, though, ultimately, as uh, as was uh, stated within that, it's pretty clear that whatever is causing this disruptance that's leaking information between these two realities, mm -hmm. um, if we do at some point try to get over there, there's the chance of a scorched earth policy that will end both of our realities. Yeah. So, uh, this is one of our handfuls of ZK. 
Yeah. Also, I decided to see who the writer was. And it is the owner of the site as of now, Dr. Clef. Oh. Cool. Yeah, one of the OG writers of the site. Who wrote... Yeah. Wait. And hopefully one that we won't find out about some gross scandal at some point. Yeah. We don't need more OG writers turning out to be scumbags. Yeah. All right. Um. So, at first, I thought it was gonna it it wasn't gonna match at all with the picture again, like with the cow thing. Yeah. But no, it like it matched. Um. That was so refreshing. Yeah. I, I love how our ZK class are just like the most weirdest yet most interesting SCPs. Yeah, we've got like a phrase that could end reality. We now have like a a, a fucking leakage between our reality and another reality that's ready to destroy us both. And an entity that we have nothing to know we know about. And has the ability to combine with O fifty five to restart the universe. Yeah, a, a restaurant. <laughs> yeah, a fucking restaurant. I forgot about the restaurant. What's the restaurant do? I forgot. I think like it does like certain reality and uh, altering things. Ah. Uh -huh. Oh yeah, and the light fixture. Like <laughs> if it doesn't get what it needs, it, it'll literally obliterate all forms of matter around it. Yeah. Let's see, wasn't there... Uh, oh, one of my... Oh, I was thinking of one, but then I forgot about it. Immediately after I thought of it. Right. Things that can destroy reality. I know it was a more recent one. Nah, whatever. Right. It'll probably come to me in like 20 minutes. Yeah. This is going to be the last one of the night. This is actually a very mm -hmm. pop. What This actually has let a, a lower rating than the previous one, even though it's well known. Really? Yeah. I mean, the other one was really good. Yeah. Uh, at first, it didn't look like an SCP article. Then when, when you read it, it was like, oh. Uh... Yeah, it was so fucking confusing at first. Yeah, but once you read it, you're like, wow, this is really well written. Yeah. <laughs> God, I'm really frustrated about my lack of remembering that SCP. Yeah. Anyway, the, uh, the SCP we're about to know, uh, Hatch, you might actually know who they are. The sisters. The sisters. I don't know if I know that one. You'll have to read it. All right. SCP-1765 is the collective designation for a group of... Oh, wait. I forgot to do something right now. I I'm an idiot. Hold on. I forgot to do a drawing of the sisters. I did not draw them. Well, yeah. Hey, this will jog my memory. Yeah, I don't know those. I, I don't know these anime-looking-ass ladies. Alright. Uh, Alright, let me reread re again. SCP-1765 yeah, is the collective designation for a group of three semi Corporeal entities typically manifesting as vaguely humanoid off white silhouettes, instances of SCP 1765 display a capacity to willfully weaken the structure of reality in their immediate presence, allowing them a limited but potent control over temporal and physical distortions within a substantial range. 
instances of SCP-1765 are capable of speech and seem to, to possess individual and consistent personalities. SCP-1765 was first introduced to Area 37 following a successful raid by Foundation forces on a Serpent's Hand cell located in a nearby city of Redacted. Several suspected an anomalous artifacts were as well as 15 captured Serpent's Hands operatives were retrieved and brought back to Area 37, an isolated facility specializing in initial, initial storage of such items. During preliminary examination of three of the retrieved artifacts, a, uh, all three instances of SCP-1765 appeared and addressed the attendant personnel researcher redacted. This conversation was recorded by the testing chamber's monitoring system. SCP-7... I'm going to just say 1, 2, and 3. That way it's a lot easier than reading. Yeah. Yeah. 1. Greetings. Greetings. Esteemed members of the Foundation. We come to you with auspicious news. 2. I. You'll be right... Right, please, T. Will. Three. Hello. Researcher. I, I'm sorry, I find that really funny. Like, the two say, like, two of them go, I have information for you, and you'll be happy to hear it. And the other one's just, Hi. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the slower, that's the slower sister. Yeah. They have social anxiety. Give them a break. Give him a break, Nathaniel. Yeah. Right. Re ahead. Researcher. What the hell? One. Pardon, sir. I will be with you in a moment. Sisters. Sisters, I thought we have to agree to let me do the introductions. You are embarrassing us. Two. Oh, <laughs> whoops. Hee <laughs> hee. Go on, we'll be quiet. Three. Apologies. One. Yes. Uh, oh, wait. Ahem. Yes, as I was saying, greetings, we are pleased to finally be able to make your acquaintance. For we have observed your organization for quite some time. Indeed, we have observed a great many, and out of, out of them, all of you stood out like a shining beacon of progress in a dark sea. Well done. Two, oh, we are so very proud. Three, congratulations. Three is just not saying more than one word. <laughs> yeah, I think three just has severe social anxiety. <laughs> that's that's my head cannon. Uh, researcher, was someone? The three gets... is me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Researcher, was someone get security? Researcher grabs his tongue, which becomes visibly blackened and withered. The One. researcher grabs his tongue? What? Well, it says under his voice song, it says, Reacher grabs, oh, grasps his tongue, which becomes visibly blackened and withered. It says right oh. under the voice thing, so. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, One. I told you, sir, I will be with you in a moment. Where was I? Oh, right. All this cons considered, we have decided that you and no other are worried of receiving our assistance. It is an honor most rare, we assure you. Two. Like a bloody stake it is. That's how rare. Three. Uh, Tartarare. <laughs> what? It T-A-R... T A R E. T A R. Tartar. Tartar, okay. Yeah. Alright. Re researcher attempts to speak again, then falls to a floor. His tongue crumbles to dust. He loses consciousness. One. Hmm. Why must people always be silly? We shall have to fix that later. I keep losing my train of thought. It is most infuriating. Two. Our help. The severity. Three. Assistance. One. Ah, thank you. Yes. Our helps. Seeing how meticulously you keep to the scientific method, we venture 
that that we could be most used to if we do the same ourselves. Our abilities in that field are substantial after all. Yes, to assist you, we will conduct several useful experiments on your behalf and deliver you the data. We believe this is the beginning of a wonderful partnership. Two, or I think he's out cold love. Three, unwell. One. Oh, never mind him. They record everything. That's why we chose them, isn't it? Two. Aye, that's so. Three. Yes. One. So, to those who are listening, we will begin our experiments immediately, since there is hardly a point in dilly-dallying. Now we realize that they might seem a bit harsh, but trust us, we know what is best for you. Two. Sisters know best. Hehe. <laughs> Three. Always. Three the entire voice log refuse to say more than one word. Oh, I feel bad for them. Yeah, I'm telling you, she's just got really bad social anxiety. Oh. This is gonna turn sinister, isn't it? Yeah. Well, actually, it kind of already is sinister. A guy got his tongue dissolved. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Following this conversation, all three instances of SCP-1765 began to move rapidly throughout Area 37. As SCP-1765 continued circling Area 37, several events were noticed which have been associated with reality-bending phenomena. SCP-1765 eventually ceased this pattern, presumably because Area 37 had become unstable enough to suit the param meters of their plan experimentation. At the conclusion of this process, security footage revealed that Area 37 was divided into four distinct sections, and Area 37's personnel divided between them accordingly according to SV-1765's location at the time of the event, as detailed below. Section A. Smallest of the sections, Section A was the least changed by SCP-1765, Notable additions are two large brass vats located at the east corner of the mess hall, a monitoring station connected to other sections of Area 37, replacing st store keeping and a large wall of sign above the entrance to the dormitories reading Control Group. Personnel belonging to the Control Group are not subjected to the experimentation taking place in other sections of Area 37. Once every five to seven hours, the Control Room uh, called Patrol group is visited by one instance of SV-1765. During said visitation, food and water are dispersed from the brass fence, and the visiting instances, instance typically addresses the control group, often encouraging them to use monitoring station to observe any ongoing experiments. Section B. Section B is the falcon of a localized spatial temporal not abnormality. Because of this, its size, climate, atmospheric com composition, and pressure and temporal flow are all, all variable and se seemingly controlled by the wealth SCB-1765-1. The entity typically overseeing experimentation in Section B, according, according to SCB-1765-1, Experimentation in Section B is meant to delve into the effects of repetitive action performed under unusual conditions on the human psyche. Oh. That doesn't sound yeah. fun. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, this is, they're, they're, they're using all of these researchers as, a, as, te as lab rats. Well, except for once in the control group. Well, yeah. They're the lucky well, ones. Well, no, they they are also lab rats because they're in the control group. They're a part of the experiment. Oh, yeah. They just aren't subjected to the same shit as the other people because they're the control group. Yeah. Section C. Section C exhibits similar anomalous properties to Section B, though it is associated with SCP-765-2 rather than SCP-765-1. Observation indicates that experiments taking place in Section C tend to focus on group dynamics and interpersonal relations during extreme conditions. On average, the physical alterations to Section C during experimentation are more radical than those observed in Section B, while temporal alterations are significantly less so. 
Section D. Uh, section D is currently the least understood segment of the altered Area 37 complex. Physically, it remains virtually unchanged from the state prior to its initial infestation by SCP-1765. Temporally, however, it appears to be entirely disconnected from the baseline stream of events existing as an isolated bubble from events occurring outside of it. The temporal reality of Section D, as well as any experimentation taking place, Within it are associated with SCP-1765-3. Due to SCP-1765-3's terse speech patterns and the general obscurity of the experiments it conducts, little is currently understood with the nature of experimentation taking place within Section D. Regardless of the section and experimentation the experiment takes place in, SP-1765 will seek to provide the Foundation with high-quality video and audio feeds documenting it. This data is transferred to the nearest compatible Foundation server. Through currently unknown means, footage will also often contain recorded notes by the supervising instance of SP-1765. So yeah. It, that's it. Okay. Well, for, we know what goes on in C and B. I wonder if there's like a test report that goes on what goes on in D. Oh, there is. Did they did they mention what happens in C and D? Well, B is is human psyche, like it messes with the human psyche. And. Section C is like it uh, focus on group dynamics and interpersonal relationships during extreme conditions. Oh yeah, but that doesn't exactly tell us what the experiments are. All right, that just tells us what they're testing. All right, so I'll read the experiments for each section. That way, we know what's going on. Right. Okay. Section B experiment. Test subjects are brought to an Area 37 support center from an unknown location and are given a wrench, a ruler, a brown paper pad, and a ballpoint pen. Subjects are then instructed by SCP-1765-1 to closely examine the support center's plumbing system and to measure the exact length of each pipe and the angle in which it's, it is connected to other pipes. This process takes between 10 and 12 hours due to the size of the support center before it can be completed. However, Section B continues to begins a reconstruction event, causing the plumbing system to be completely rearranged and rendering all work previously done moot. Test subjects are then instructed to begin again. The process be repeats itself 459 times before the experiment concludes. Bruh. That's fucked. Bruh. Uh. Now you see why it, yeah. it can mess with the human psyche, because I would be going mad. Are there results from the experiment? I mean, there's, listed? There, there are her notes. Yeah. Uh, following yesterday's somewhat disappointing expedition to... Oh, wait. Yeah. Uh, Olympus Moon... Olympus Mons. I have decided... To attempt something less taxing on my test subjects, which are thus far proving to be both physically unimpressive and morally lacking. This simple exp examination of repeating sensory input in a manner in which it can be connected to other primal re reactions to the point of overload should prove both useful to you and within my test subjects' rather limited capability. Finally, a, a proof that even if we try to learn from experience, that attempt is ultimately pointless, since once life passes you by, you'll just have to learn everything all over again. That's useful knowledge, children. I do hope you're you are paying attention. All right, so let's happen in, uh, in section C. The experiment. The experiment took place in two phases. On the first phase, set subjects were divided into two teams, both consisting consisting of of a mix of both MTF personnel and Serpent's Hand operators. 
Both groups were then instructed by SCP-1765-2 to head to the bunkers located at the ends of the field. While running in these to these positions, several hooded figures appeared on the stadium's bleachers and began bombarding the test subjects with fast-moving, fiery projectiles. Additionally, three meters tall curved platforms began rising from the ground, requiring test subjects to exercise teamwork in order to bypass them. Due to the mixed composition of the team's test subjects were unable to overcome the platforms in time, and both teams were incinerated by the projectiles before reaching the bunkers. 30 seconds following this, the second phase of the experiment began, and the same group of test subjects again appearing near the 50-yard line unharmed. Subjects were again divided into two groups, one consisting only of MTF personnel and the other of superintendent operators. Test subjects were again instructed to reach the bunkers. Tests proceeded as previously recorded, with both teams now able to surpass the raised platforms and reach the bunkers. At this point, however, the doors to the bunkers closed shut and the two previously unseen pairs of sizable metal hammers descended from the unknown origin spot, crushing both teams to death. The notes. I saw the kitties were having a bad time with that double date thing we did. So I thought to myself, smile with kitties today, don't go for romance no more. It's too slow for them. They want excitement and sweat and explosions and sports. So I called a few old friends of mine and they were happy to help. Weren't they just... What was the name of the tall one with the robes? Madame? Mavine? Or, or was it John? Bah, can't remember. But I know he just loves football. He he. We sure had a grand old time, even with the burning and the crushing and all. Oh, I think I'm forgetting something. Oh, the test. This was, this was a test. Yeah. Um. See, it goes to show you that no matter who you're with, you'll eventually get crushed by huge metal hammers, hammers, smashing down from the sky. Hmm. No, that can't be right. Ah, I got it. Doesn't matter how much you prepare, it's prepare, and who's with you. Sooner or later, fate's gonna catch up with you. He he. Yes. This is, I like, this sounds just peachy. A lesson to be learned, my lads. A lesson to be learned. I felt like I've read a, te a female teenager's text. Yeah, that's, that, this, that, this sounds like early Tumblr shit. <laughs> like, like a whole shit ton of, like, teenage jargon. All right. Now we get to find out what goes on in Section D. I'm kind of terrified, so Se I wonder if this is worse. Section D's nuts. Oh my gosh, I, just... I hate myself. All right, experiment. Site director redacted enters Areas 37's main containment vault. At the center of the vault, a table is placed. On the, on the table are two liter vats of redacted brand ice cream. One pistachio flavored and the other passion fruit flavored. Site director redacted is instructed by SCP-1765-3 to choose. Site director redacted then chooses pistachio flavored ice cream and leaves the room. At this point, footage momentarily blurs and site director redacted returns to the room in which the unchosen vat of ice cream was replaced by a different one. This one chocolate flavored. He is again instructed to choose, this time picking the chocolate-flavored ice cream. The process repeats itself with each unpicked fat replaced by one of, the, of a different flavor. At the time of the writing of this document, the Foundation has received over 10,000 hours of footage from this experiment with analysis and identifying over 200,000 different flavors of ice cream, including Meerkat Marshmallow Madness, Tranquility, that shoe you always liked, God's Wrath, and Redacted. All evidence suggests that this experiment is still ongoing. Notes. Delicious. <laughs> so, is what? That, section D, like, not bad at all? You're just choosing I... ice cream to... Oh, yeah, but there's no indication that they get the ice cream. They're just constantly choosing different weird 
flavors of ice cream over and over again. <laughs> hey, at least they're not dying. Yeah, yeah, at least they're not dying and being revived or having to fucking measure the length of pipes for 12 hours just to have the pipes change. Yeah. This is... This is odd. I feel like this is like you would be going to hell if you go in section B or C. Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, section D, you... It... I guess it could be psychological torture, but it's not as bad as the other two. Yeah, like, let's see, C is the one that uh, had the people dying. Yeah. Um. <sighs> so my first thought is that this is like the Dead Man Wonderland version of Valhalla. Yeah. You you know, you, you go there, you, you you have a big feast, and in the morning you go out and kill everyone. You kill all the people from, from from the place. But then when it's feast time again, they're all revived and they go feast and make merry, and then they go kill each other again forever. I honestly don't understand why anyone wants to go to Valhalla. Uh... Like, uh, to to each their own on terms of where they'd prefer to go for an afterlife, speculating. But that just sounds like hell. Not the good hell, the bad hell. Yeah. But, yeah. Listen, this is what like to... a terrifying SCP. I mean, yeah, it's like really scary on the surface of it, like what's happening to these researchers, but also what's it going... Like, I don't think that this is much of a threat to those outside of that containment facility. So, yeah, a certain group. Yeah, a certain group makes the most sense here. Like, granted, the, these, these, uh, these girls, if they wanted to, they could fuck up humanity, but they seem to just want to keep doing their nonsensical experiments while framing them as if they're actually scientific. One thing I'm gonna do for the next tier list is only put thirty at a time. That way, it's not so pushed out that you can't read the sides. Yeah. Yeah. This is getting excessive. Yeah. So yeah, that's gonna be it for now. But what if we want to continue, right? Ah, uh, fuck you. Book on less words go. I swear, if they ever try to copyright an SCP video again, I swear. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Hatchet, you weren't even there. But you still want to drink mm -hmm. coffee. Um, so, for my Crasher, Castle Crashers video that I uploaded to be scheduled, I labeled it with the Creative Commons license, as well as changed it from standard YouTube license to Creative Commons license, right? Yeah. Gets a copyright claim. I look over, the make, and to my surprise, it no longer has the Creative Commons license. It has a YouTube standard license. The fuck? That meant that you, the only two people that can change that is myself and YouTube. Now, mm. it didn't make sense to me because YouTube always says we don't interfere with you uh, with copyright claims and the owner of the video. Bullshit. The are you a hundred percent sure you put it up as Creative Commons? Every time I I always triple check every single time, when because of the copyright strike. Mm. So it would not have passed or without me checking. Mm. So yeah, YouTube changed My... it. 
My only thought is that maybe it was changed because, like, is it because there's like castle, like castle crashers? I like don't. maybe YouTube changed it because it had to do with a specific video game. Maybe, but that, but once it, it YouTube standard license got put in place, anyone's free to attack it. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking pieces of shit. Oh, yeah, you're ready, Bookworm? Yeah. Okay. Go ahead, Bookworm. Use your last words. Like, subscribe, and follow Bright on all socials, and give her money if you can. And in the words of SCP-1765-3, delicious. Wait. <laughs> they say all the worst things. Said S uh, you know how I said SCP-7065-3? Yeah. The sound alert said SCP-1765-23. Uh. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure that's not how you read the, the SCP's name, but okay. What did what did they actually say? The bookworm says like, subscribe, and follow Bright on all our socials, and give her money if you can. And in the words of SCP seventeen sixty five dash three, delicious. But... All right, Adarna, last words go. Um, follow, subscribe. Uh, the right is a bird. All right, hatchet, last words go. <sighs> and remember, kids, I'm going to set your hometown on fire. Oh, okay. Now, as for my last words, um, I'm actually going to bring you interesting, interesting <laughs> trivia that's actually true. I, I didn't believe it, but it actually is. You ready? Okay. In 1882, London prostitute Gerda Friedel invented the eyelash extension and called them cumbrellas. She wanted a way to block semen from getting into prostitute eyes as they were getting cum shots on their faces. About 140 years later, it has now become a makeup fashion trend. <laughs> Hot. Yeah, Face. you're you're never gonna look at those the same. <laughs> that book one's like, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Cool. <laughs> You're never gonna look at an eyeglass extension the same because of what they're originally purposed for. Yeah, that's that's amazing. <laughs> it's that's like one of those little facts that like that completely shifts your perspective on a character. Like you know, like we're used to talking about how like old Saint Nick, you know, Santa Claus. He's also the patron saint of prostitutes. Yeah. Because <laughs> he would drop bags of money down the chimney of brothels to help the ladies be able to get food. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And there's also uh, an account where he someone the fuck up during the uh, the canonization of the Bible. I forgot the name of the trials. Uh, Council of Nicaea. During the Council of Nicaea, he got really pissed at some guy and beat him the fuck up. Damn. He he couldn't he couldn't handle that this one dirty pagan was coming in and kind of criticizing Christ. So he he beat him up. <laughs> I got I I I guess there's a good and a bad side to everyone, huh? Yeah. On one hand, you're supporting sex workers. On the other hand, you're beating up pagans. Although, to be fair, the, it, at the very least, the record that I saw did imply that the pagan was being very, very rude about his criticisms, but still. 
Okay. Now, every time I see eyelash extension, I can only see them as cumbrellas. <laughs> Cumbrella. <laughs> it's one of the <laughs> best names. Cumbrella. Yeah. <laughs> so, why is there not a Cumbrella category on my hentai site? That is that is a big question. Wait, I should check that. There's no way, way that exists, right? <laughs> you I'm, look it up and it exists. I, I'm yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna look this up before stream ends. Um. So I use this site. Oh, that's a really nice looking comic. I'm gonna save that. Um. Uh. Tags. Okay, actually, no. I'll just type in Cumbrella. How is it spelled? Hold on, I, I can get it. Let me go to back to my pictures. Uh, it is C U M. Yep. B R E L L A S. Wait, did it okay. just added a C to umbrella? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I searched cumbrellas in this site and there was no responses. Let me just search cumbrella. Uh on Google. No, not on Google, in, in my hentai site. Uh Book of Cinema is a uh oh. <laughs> well a Snope says it's not true but it's still interesting to hear about what is it oh actually? Snopes is it actually not true because from what I saw it was, it was true let's see oh don't trust everything you see on the internet right yeah I'm gonna double check. Yeah, I'm searching too. Eh. Umbrella. Real or fake? Portland News. Yeah, the only thing I'm seeing of, like, attesting to it having been the case are rather sketchy, uh, rather sketchy sources. Wait, I know there's an easier way, so it's eyelash extensions, right? Just, let's look up who invented eyelash extensions. Yeah, it's an easier way to go about it. See, eyelash extensions. Uh, inventor. I mean, even if it's not true, I still gonna find that funny. <laughs> it's a funny anecdote. Oh no! In 1911, a Canadian inventor named Anna Taylor pa uh, patented artificial eyelashes. Yeah, so it is. It is fake news. Also, did you Canada. say? Can, did you say Canadian as Canadian? Canadian. Canadian. Shut up. <laughs> shape, strip oh, of fabric. the snow thing. Oh, thanks, bookworm. I didn't see that. Oh, uh, it was just a meme. That it was. I mean, that's a damn well good meme. That is a very good meme. It's just also spreading misinformation. Yeah. Yeah, Snopes. Did prostitute Gerda Pridlil invent fake ass lashes to uh, protect her eyes? Rating. False. <laughs>
In January 2021, the website America's Best Picks shared a meme claiming that a prostitute named Gerda Peredo invented long eyelashes in 1980s. The one in this picture is not a prostitute. Her name was not Gerda Peredo, and the claim about the origins of artificial eyelashes was made up out of whole cloth. The woman featured in this meme is Alice Rognault, a French actress and novelist who rose to prominence in 1870s. This photograph appears to have been taken by French photographer Gaspard Filetti Croixant, better known as Nadar Sika, 1979. Awesome. It was included in a guide published a few years later called Les Actrices de Paris, the actress of Paris in Emily Burgess. Ah, uh, yep, that's just that's the exact same photo. Yep, that's that's fact checked. Okay. Here's how Ragnault was described in Les Actrices de Paris. An intelligent and flexible actress who, through commitment and hard work, has managed to escape a repetition, escape okay. a reputation as a pretty woman, where the love of the masses kept her as in a prison. So here, the fine and elegant Mademoiselle Regnault proven herself for some time now. So, I. I guess we should thank Bookworm for actually fact check, uh, yeah, fact checking. I almost said fact checking. <laughs> fact checking. Okay, everyone, I'm gonna fact check. <laughs> okay, I'm looking down. I pulled up my shirt. Yep, fat check. There's fat here. <laughs> I am, I I I am a certified fat checker. I check fat. That's all I do. <laughs> And I'm also not certified, because who the fuck makes those certifications? Now I need to go, like, poorly Photoshop a certificate and fat checking. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's the question. If I was a fat checker, would that include breasts? Maybe. And thick booty cheeks? Maybe. I like this job description. <laughs> <laughs> you just walk up to a random person and says, it, it says Ma'am, could you stop for a moment? I'm I'm a personal fat checker. <laughs> Bookworm redeemed bonk hatchet. That's fair. Yeah. <laughs> but you see, I'm going to redeem Y Dragon just because. <laughs> They're not uh, even here. Yeah. And we wouldn't be talking about this if they were here. Yeah. Anyway, D class. I hope you enjoyed uh, learning about misinformation sent about from a meme as well as SCPs. That just <laughs> I hope. <laughs> All right, D class. I hope you enjoyed <laughs> bright almost publishing misinformation about fake eyelashes. <laughs> <laughs> Although to be fair, it would be like probably the least consequential misinformation you could ever post. I think there's only one part of the video that's going to get me in big in trouble. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> really should have taken a step back. Avoided that. I, I forgot that was the bad part. I literally forgot. I, I was just reading. You didn't even hear a yeah. Derner react to it? No, I was too busy <laughs> like, reading. Like you said, the... uh. Edit aroma yeah, edit over, over it. it. Yeah, like you, you say you 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 say the slur for Roma, and then Aderna's like, I like Aderna very vocally <laughs> reacts, and you just don't notice. <laughs> yeah, I don't. You didn't notice that you were reading a slur. You didn't notice Aderna react to your slur. I had to like. Practically, what like pull your hand through, <laughs> making you realize that you accidentally said a slur. Yeah. 
<laughs> it's the only upside is that it's a lesser known slur that's less frequently used. Yeah, if I said, said the N word, I would have been done for. Yeah, no, that's just no. <laughs> yeah, I would have been done that for. Happening. That's a part of like why I'm hesitant to read Lovecraft for yeah. scary story nights. They use the um the actual like the how do I describe it? Uh N I G R G the original term that evolved into the N word. Oh. Hmm. No, they don't use the hard R. They use like the original, I think it's Spanish term that evolved into the N word. It's also, oh. I think it was also used a um, lot by MLK. But oh yeah, I I know what it yeah. is. Yeah, yeah that I term. Know. I know. I know so, how to pronounce it too. Um, yeah. Well, it's probably not say it. <laughs> I mean, isn't it still a li living word in Spanish? It just depends mm -hmm. on context. Yeah, Probably. But yeah, like, I, I would want to avoid, like, if I would... It's a color. It's a color. Yeah, it's a color. In, it's literally the color black in Spanish. Yeah. But I would be... Uh, I just realized that means that just calling someone by that word is the same as just calling someone a black. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, God, Aderna, you weren't there for when I mentioned this really funny moment, I think, where uh, we're talking about how um, I saw a TikTok where a bunch of people were fishing off the close coast of Florida, I think. And it's just this big old, like this medium sized fishing boat with a whole bunch of white guys on it. And, uh, you know, they've got a big fish on their line and they see that a bull shark's coming in and is going to try to repredate them. But they get the fish away from the bull shark. And what they caught is a black sea bass. So you have a boat full of white fishermen just ecstatically say, like yelling, "It's a black!" Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's just like, at, like take, like if you just take that footage and just like delete the footage, only keep the audio. <laughs> It is like, <laughs> like Google we all says, oh, get no. what they're saying. They're not, they're not being racist, but it's just like one of those beautiful moments of like take this slightly out of context. And uh, uh. Okay. I have a question to ask you too. Do either of you have a tattoo? I do not nope. know. Okay, because my tattoo is starting to itch, and I don't know if it's if it's a good thing or a bad thing. Motherfucker, you just had ink injected into your skin. I feel like that would be a normal reaction. Uh, and it an itch for like if I'm not mistaken, an itch is literally just the epidermis saying, I am irritated by something. Uh, you had ink injected into your epidermis. But anyway, uh, yeah, <laughs> with 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 commenting on accidentally racist moments, uh, put aside. Uh, Pokemon says, "Yeah, I think a little itch is normal." Yeah, like it, it, it honestly, it'd be weird if it didn't itch. I mean, it only started itching today, mm. since Wednesday. So after, yeah, it since Wednesday it was like mainly just sore. Which makes sense. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, but anyway, V class, I hope yeah. you enjoyed and hope to see you guys next time for your next experiment.